Uh, just a moment. <laughs> I guess it must have been the wind. Hello there! You are watching the premium version of the Pokemon Gen 4 Moves tier list. I'm your host, Charizard. Uh, if for some reason you would like to see the full version of this livestream, you'll find a link to that in the description below. So what is a Moves tier list? Well, we've done Gens 1, 2, and 3, and... I don't think we've quite decided on a formula yet, but we've been trying. So we are going to be ranking uh, these moves here based on their viability. What does that mean? <laughs> it's a good question. There's a lot of ways for a move to be viable and we're gonna be generous. Uh, we're going to consider whatever format a move is best in. So if a move is really good in single player, it gets credit for that. If a move is really good in singles competitive, it gets credit for that. If a move is really competitive in filthy double battles, it gets credit for that too. And we're generally going to consider the best incarnation of a move. Uh, so very importantly, this tier list is how good the moves introduced in Gen 4 are. Not how good the moves actually were in Gen 4. That's going to be very important when we talk about moves like Defog. <laughs> so what's actually new in Gen 4? Well, the big thing about Gen 4 is the introduction of the physical special split, which is one of the last major mechanical shakeups that have been introduced to Pokemon. Which is kind of crazy if you think about it, because Dipa came out like 15 years ago by this point. Uh, so Gen 4 introduced the physical special split. Gen 5 introduced hidden abilities, which is just abilities. Uh, sometimes better, sometimes not. Always more annoying, though. Gen 6 introduced Fairy, which I think is uh, the last major shakeup. It also introduced Megas, which were awesome. R.I.P. <laughs> Gen 7 introduced... Z moves, which are what if moves, but big. Good riddance. Gen 8 introduced Gigantamax, which is what if Pokemon, but big. Uh, good riddance. And Gen 9 introduced Terrastralize, and you can bet that by Gen 10, hats are going to be out of fashion. So, yeah, physical special split, big deal. <laughs> So what is the physical special split? If you're a diaper kid, you, you might not know. But back in the day, Gens 1, 2, and 3, moves used to be physical or special based purely on their typing. So to use fire for an example, fire moves used to all be special. Both fire punch and flamethrower both just did special damage. But starting in Gen 4, fire punch is now physical and flamethrower is now special, even though both are still fire moves. This was overall a buff for pretty much every Pokemon because now you get to use whatever your better attacking stat is with your stab type moves. What that means for this tier list is that you get a lot of sort of just vanilla moves that just exist as new uh, physical or special options for that type. Most of the physical or special types kind of made sense. Uh, like for example, uh, fighting was a physical type, uh, rock was a physical type, and ghost was a physical type. I did not misspeak. For whatever reason, ghosts, <laughs> the least physical type ever, was classified as physical. One funny thing is that dark was considered a special type, and then every single dark move from gens 2 and 3 became physical. <laughs> Uh, and the very first special dark move is actually introduced this gen. Pretty funny. Challenge for people watching in the future. Uh, if you can think of a Pokemon that was actually nerfed by the physical special split, post it in the comments below. I, I can't really think of any. I, I tried. I guess Snorlax used to use Shadow Ball, but now he can't. But instead he can just use Crunch. Oh, yeah, Alakazam got nerfed. Houndoom too. Okay, actually there's a ton of them. Uh, post them in the comments anyways. <laughs> okay, a lot of elemental punch out Pokemon got nerfed. That's fair. But overall it was a buff. Gen 4 also introduced three new evolutions. Leafeon, 
Glaceon, and the mighty Patreon, who you can see on screen now. Thank you uh, for your support, and if you would like to evolve into a Patreon, you don't need a special stone, you just need your credit card, and the numbers on the back, and the link in the description. Thank you. So what are the actual tiers? Uh, you've seen them on screen for a while, but allow me to actually explain them. At the very top we have meta-defining. Uh, these are moves that are so powerful, uh, not only do they define the Pokemon they're on, they define the entire metagame. So an example of that would be, say, Protect, uh, defines the doubles metagame, super powerful. Uh, substitute, really, really strong as well. Those would be meta-defining moves. Under that we have Staples. These are moves that are generally the best of their type, for example, Flamethrower, uh, not exactly setting the game on fire, but a really solid move that uh, you're not upset to be using. And under that we have a new tier that did not appear in Generations 1, 2, or 3, Signature. Uh, Gen 4 is when they kind of went crazy with like 50,000 legendaries. That's a slight exaggeration, I think it was closer to like 10. <laughs> but they add a lot of legendaries with signature moves, and it's really hard to rank signature moves because their distribution is so limited, usually only one or two Pokemon get them. Any signature move we're just going to toss in signature. We are going to talk about them, and we talk about signature moves, I think there's two questions we want to answer. One. Does the Pokemon who actually gets the move use it? So for example, Lugia gets Aeroblast, but he doesn't really use it. And the second question is, would other Pokemon use the move if they could? And under that we have the niche tier. These are moves that have a very specific use, I think. Overall, I would consider these moves like kind of bad, but if the stars align, uh, they do something, maybe. I think in the previous lists, filler and outclass and niche were switched, but people complained about that. So this time, feel free to complain about how niche is higher. Then under that, we have filler outclassed. I don't want to call these moves bad, but you're probably not going to be using them at the end of the game. So for example, this would be a move like Ember or Vine Whip, moves that pretty much everyone uses because you kind of have to, because you don't have Flamethrower and... Uh, what are the good grass moves? <laughs> Leaf Blades <laughs> at the beginning of the game, so you would use the filler moves. And at the bottom we have bad. Uh, these moves just suck. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna say like these are moves that either do nothing or have applications that are so, so narrow that they can't even be considered niche. I think it's pretty clear which moves are bad. I will say that it'll be very difficult for a move that actually deals damage to go in bad. Not impossible, but to be a move that goes in bad, that does damage, you gotta be real bad. Is Bofa a top tier? Nice try, buddy. It's uh, Rhydon's favorite move, okay? I thought Sock-On was Slugma's signature move. Man, everyone's trying to get me. Let's get started. So these moves are all in alphabetical order, which means that leading off the list is A... Acupressure. I'm not sure if acupressure counts as uh, alternative medicine, but I hope you've got an alternative to this move. <laughs> it's terrible. Off to a great start. Oh, acupressure. <laughs> it's a boosting move. Instead of choosing what stat I want to boost, you know, whatever stat would actually be useful for me, how about I just boost a random stat that probably doesn't do anything? Sounds like a great strategy. <laughs> so what Acupressure actually does is it sharply boosts either your attack, defense, special attack, special defense, speed, accuracy, or evasion by plus two. Which one? Who knows? <laughs> it's a lottery. Great. I think this is the only Smogon legal way to boost your evasion. So there is that. Uh, I think the most noteworthy thing about Acupressure is this the fact that you could actually acupressure your ally so there's a universe out there where you acupressure your partner give them a nasty plot or a sword stance or an agility whatever they wanted and then you win the battle in this universe though you probably lost <laughs> but hey if you're a rambling gaming dude then maybe acupressure is the move for you Okay, well, some people are, some people in chat are saying this should be niche. No way. 
However, some people might consider this move convenient. Air Slash! Air Slash, Air Slash is pretty good. Uh, it is a physical art. Uh, and it is a positional. If you use Air Slash from the side, uh, you can inflict Break. Break is really important. Uh, break leads to Topple, which leads to Daze, which is the best way to get through most encounters. But even if you can't follow it up with Wild Down, uh, just breaking the opponent will interrupt their action, which can change the future. Uh, as a recovery move, it's not bad. The vertical height is okay, but you get almost no horizontal distance, unless you're actually in the jump art. Obviously, when you have Jump Art active, Air Slash gives you insane height, uh, but you have to actually have Jump Art active beforehand. I think it's also a Pokemon move, so let's talk about that. Air Slash is pretty good. We can put it in staples. Air Slash is a flying type move. Uh, I guess we can actually look at all the stats for it. Air Slash, or as it's known in Japanese, Air, Air Slash, <laughs> uh, is a flying type move. Uh, it is special. You can see Power 75, it is a bit low <laughs> but it's not like disastrously low accuracy 95 because if it was 100 it would just be too powerful all right you got to keep it balanced for the most part this is 100 accuracy but five percent of the time i guess you'll be reminded that it's not actually 100 accuracy why did they do this just make it 100 guys the most notable thing about air slash is that it has a 30 percent chance to flinch or as most of you know it a hundred percent chance to flinch when used by Togekiss. It overall just ends up being a very solid uh, special attacking option for special attacking flying types. I can think of one who might use Air Slash. Shaman Sky also really likes this. Quiz, what's the connection between Shaman Sky and Togekiss that makes them really like Air Slash? Man, I wish Shulk had Serene Grace, because a lot of the time the Air Slash break doesn't actually apply. Not good! Uh, one thing to note is that Air Slash, uh, it is a cutting move. Uh, so with sharpness, its power is increased by 50%. Uh, I don't think a single sharpness Pokemon would actually use this. But if they do, they deal 50% more damage. Okay. Also, despite being literally Blades of Wind, it is apparently not a wind move. So it does not activate wind power. So you can go ahead and air slash kill a Watchroll without worrying about buffing it, I guess. Ha, quit yet! The first of several priority moves that were added in Generation 4. Generation 4 added a ton of priority moves. So priority moves are ones that usually go first. Uh, all moves operate in a, like a priority bracket system, and then your speed stat only matters within the priority brackets. Most moves are zero priority, but what are called priority moves usually have some level of plus priority. Aqua Jet is plus one, uh, which is where most priority moves fall. Aqua Jet is really good. Uh, it is only 40 base power, but when you get to go first almost all the time, 40 is sometimes enough. Super, super good. Azumarill loves this move because Azumarill has huge power, literally, and it also has terrible speed. <laughs> Aqua Jet helps it utilize its strength while working around its weaknesses. Priority moves all pair really well with uh, attack boosts. So a really popular combo is Swords Dance uh, to buff up your attack. And then you don't have to buff up your speed because you just rely on Aqua Jet uh, to snipe the opponent before they can hit you and knock you out. Very good move. Strong enough that you'd even experiment with some kind of funky stuff like Swords Dance on Empoleon. Empoleon's normally a special attacker, but I mean, it gets Aqua Jet, so you can try jetting them. <laughs> These days, there is a stronger variant of Aqua Jet called Jet Punch, but I think only Palafin has that, so Aqua Jet uh, is available on far more Pokemon. Uh, very good, somebody mentioned this is a water move, which means that if it's raining, it gets stronger. Uh, and rain is a very strong weather condition. It's probably the single strongest one. So having a priority move that gets stronger in rain also gives Aqua Jet some extra power uh, that other priority moves don't get. Aqua Jet can't melt steel beams. Aqua Ring. It's wet leftovers. It gives you a leftovers effect where it restores 6% of your health a turn until you switch out. Leftovers, uh, we gave the honor of the oh. best item in the entire game because steady recovery is really, really valuable. And Aqua Ring gives you steady recovery, so it's good, right? 
I'm thinking about putting this in bad. I don't know anybody who actually uses Aquarine. <laughs> The thing about leftovers is that it just heals you, right? You have it equipped and it heals you. Aqua Ring, you have to dedicate a move slot to and a turn to. Yeah, this might actually just go in bad because one way to think about this is you could either use a recovery move or you could use Aqua Ring. In order to heal from Aqua Ring an amount equivalent to recover, this would take, what, seven, eight turns? You spend eight turns to heal from Aqua Ring, eight turns that you need to stay in consecutively, or you can press recover once. This is actually pretty bad. <laughs> it's so cat. I don't know why you would ever use Aqua Ring. Uh, if you're trying to make like an epic Magikarp sweep video, uh, you can baton pass Aqua Ring and ingrain. <laughs> but if you're trying to make a highlight video like that, I don't really think you're trying to win, right? It's just worse ingrain. I mean, it's arguably better. There is a difference between Aqua Ring and Ingrain. With Ingrain, you get the rooted effect, so you cannot be switched out by Roar or Whirlwind, like phasing moves, but you also can't switch out. So it's both upside and downside. Aqua Ring does not have that. It just gives you the recovery. MJDXP says, too bad Big Root doesn't affect Aqua Ring. How does it feel? to know that your entire life has been a lie. Big Root Gaming can increase the Aqua Ring healing by 30. <laughs> no, it does not make Aqua Ring better. But look at that. Plants and water working in tandem to still be useless. <laughs> the secret that Big Root doesn't want you to know. Well, you know now, right? Please subscribe. <laughs> Time to ban myself for getting this wrong? Don't worry. Don't say I don't care about the audience. I'll do it for you. <laughs> Hammered. <laughs> I didn't actually ban him, guys. Aqua Tail. So Team Aqua was in Gen 3, but Gen 4 introduced all the Aqua moves. Uh, this is the first of the sort of vanilla moves that were sort of added to fill out physical or special options. As you can see here, there's nothing bad about it. 90 base power is great, 90 accuracy, wish it was 100, but it's not that bad. No additional effects. In general, you'd rather take the extra accuracy and the flint chance of Waterfall over Aqua Tail, but there are Pokemon that learn Aqua Tail, but not Waterfall, such as uh, Rhyperior. If you've got a tail, even if you're not aquatically inclined, if you haven't taken your swimming lessons, you can still end up using this. It ends up being overall worse than Waterfall, and especially Liquidation, but I mean, those moves are really good, right? It's not terribly exciting, but 90 base power is nothing to sneeze at, so this is probably gonna end up in very low staples by the end. But Aqua Tail is a move that some Pokemon would run with no better options. Filler, it's 90 base power, like, it's not that bad. Wow, people really hate Aqua Tail. What in the world? How much did Team Magma pay you guys? Okay, so like these are all the Pokemon that get Aqua Tail. Well, Dragonite would probably use Waterfall. Very convenient move. Steelix gets it. Yeah, you guys are out of your mind. Like Aqua Tail is fine. <laughs> Filler, we're talking about like Ember, okay? <laughs> I think because Aqua Jet and Air Slash are much better, it's making Aqua Tail look better than it is. You guys are too mean. And I say this as someone who's very mean. <laughs> This is a 90 base power, 90 accuracy move. Like, <laughs> what? Assurance. You can be assured that you've better options than this. It's a 50 base power dark move, previously 50. It's been buffed to 60. And sort of the gimmick is that if the opponent has taken damage previously on this turn, the power then doubles to either 100 or 120. Quick question. If assurance is your attack, then how did the opponent take damage before you actually attacked them? There's a couple ways that can happen. If they switch in onto entry hazards, that counts as taking damage. If they somehow damage themselves through like a life orb or through a recoil move, that counts as damage. Or if you're in a double battle, your partner can hit them and then you can assure and then deal the extra damage from that. Pretty much none of that <laughs> is reliable enough to actually choose to put assurance on your Pokemon. The scenario you would use Assurance is if you're like leveling up 
and you happen to learn assurance, you don't have any other dark moves or moves that you might want to use. In that case, I guess you would use assurance. Why is assurance dark type? I assume it's because so dark type moves, they really double down on this starting from generation five, but generally dark type moves are considered like sneaky and like underhanded. So with Assurance, you're like beating somebody after they've already been attacked, right? You're like ganging up. So that's why it's a dark type move. I think that's fine. Attack Order. The very first of many signature moves we'll be covering, so we don't have to think about the tearing that much. It's a signature move, one of three that Vespiquin gets. If you look at the numbers here, this looks pretty good. Uh, 90 power, 100 accuracy, and it gets extra crit. This is a very, very good physical move. Uh, two issues with this move. One, it's a bug Ooh. move, so it's resisted by everything. And two, it's on Vespiquin, who's not really attacking because Vespiquin is more interested in defending. Uh, and it really is not even going to be defending that often because it's going to be knocked out because it's a bug flying type. Mm. So attack order suffers the fate of many signature moves, which is... It's on a Pokemon that doesn't actually use it, but a ton of physical bug types would use it if they could. Execute Order 416. <laughs> and just some final words in praise of Attack Order. This is a very fun signature move because this is what Vespiquin would do. It would order other Pokemon to attack on its behalf. Very royal. Behold the power of Aura. Aura Sphere. Previously the signature move of Lucario, but it's since been expanded. A bunch more Pokemon now get Aura Sphere. It used to be 80 base power, infinite accuracy. It is now 90 base power, infinite accuracy. Infinite accuracy is pretty much the same as 100% accuracy. Very rarely does auto hit actually matter, but it is upside. Aura Sphere is really good. It is an excellent special fighting option. And there aren't many special fighting moves out there. If you can learn Aura Sphere, you're probably going to try and use it. One nice thing about Aura Sphere is that it is a blaster move. Uh, so it gets powered up by a Mega Launcher. So Clauncher uh, gets a fake stab boost on it. And Mega Blastoise, RIP, used to get a boost on it as well. All right, well, apparently I'm not attuned to the aura because I lied to you. It actually got nerfed. It used to be 90 and it got reduced to 80. Womp womp. Also, be very careful when you use this move because there is a good chance your aura sphere will actually have zero base power because the opponent has bulletproof and a hard walls aura sphere. <laughs> Truly, chestnut is unstoppable. Oh, so somebody in chat brought up a good point. The Japanese name of Aura Sphere is Hadodan, and Hado is Pulse. You've probably heard this word before, Hadoken, right? It's that Hado. That's why it gets powered up by the Mega Launcher. And then Dan, uh, in this case, means like bullet, which is why it gets blocked by bulletproof. So that's why it interacts with both those abilities. Thanks for bringing that up. And no, I don't know why he says Hado instead of Hado. It's definitely Hado, but for whatever reason, Ken says Hado. Avalanche. Avalug fans, your moment still has not come. Keep waiting. <laughs> That's... So Avalanche is, I guess, a, a vengeance style move. It is 60 base power, which, I mean, that's not great. Uh, but if you get hit during the turn you use this, it doubles to 120, which is very good. Unfortunately, this pretty much forces you to move second. It is negative four priority, which is really low, <laughs> you're almost certainly uh, moving second. And if the opponent doesn't actually hit you, you just do the 60 base damage, which isn't very good at all. That's the fail case. You're also an ice type, so you'll probably die before using it. Well, Avalanche is probably most useful on like, I don't know, Swampert? Oh, yeah. Because Swampert is almost certainly going second anyway. And his other ice option is like Ice Punch. So for him, you might as well use Avalanche because you're not losing that much and you do get decent upside if you get hit and Swampert is planning to get hit. We might actually move this up to niche because it's actually a pretty strong coverage move on like a couple Pokemon. You must be this brave to fly. Brave bird, baby. And I guess while we're doing this, we'll also do Flare Blitz and Woodhammer because they're all type shifted versions of each other. 
Brave Bird is a flying move. We're gonna soar all the way to like the top of staples. And you might be thinking like, wait, why isn't this in meta defining? If you played in generation six, you might have memories of getting Brave Birded every single turn of every single battle. <laughs> uh, but that's really because of Gale Wings the ability and not Brave Bird the move. So first I'm gonna discuss some things that apply to all three of these. So all three of these are 120 base power, 100 accuracy, and you take a third of the damage you deal as recoil. I think I say this every time for recoil moves, but I want to show for them because they're probably a lot better than you think if you only play the single player campaign. Because in the single player campaign, recoil moves are not that good. Uh, you have a ton of stat advantages that allow you to easily defeat enemy Pokemon with weaker base power moves. Uh, and the big downside of recoil moves that they hurt you <laughs> persists after the battle. So you have to actually heal yourself up afterwards, which makes these moves really annoying to use for seemingly no benefit because your weaker moves kill anyway. In competitive, it is a totally different story. In competitive, I, I want to stress this, the recoil moves heal you. Because here's the thing, you could fire punch them, they don't die, and then they kill you. <laughs> or you could flare blitz them, they do die, and then you just take the recoil, so you actually end up with more health. Now, let me be clear, recoil is not an upside. <laughs> it's definitely still a downside. These moves would be better if they didn't hurt you, but the fact they do hurt you is not that bad. You kind of have to get over that initial reticence <laughs> about using moves that have a, a drawback like this, uh, but you can plan around it, and almost always in a competitive context, the extra power is worth it. These moves are all really good. Woodhammer definitely is the worst of these three because it's an offensive grass move, right? Grass is ass, <laughs> terrible attacking type. But if you want to use a physical grass move, Woodhammer is one of the best ones you could use. It also appears on quite a few Pokemon that aren't actually grass types, and notably Sudowoodo and Mimikyu can also use this. Flare Blitz is super good. <laughs> Obviously, if you're a special attack, you're gonna be using Fire Blast for near comparable power, uh, but Flare Blitz is the gold standard of physical fire moves. If you are a physical fire Pokemon, you are blitzing. This move is crazy. I think Sacred Fire overall is like a little bit better than Flare Blitz. It's also worth mentioning for Flare Blitz, because this is a fire move, if it's sunny, you blitz even harder. <laughs> One more thing about Flare Blitz. It is the only one of these three moves that has a secondary effect, right? It has the chance to burn. You're not trying to burn your opponent, you're trying to kill them, right? The reason why I mention this is because Darmanitan has sheer force. And because burn is technically a secondary effect, that means you can choose to give up the burn chance to deal more damage. So back in Gen 5, you would literally just press Choice Band or Life Orb Flare Blitz. And if the opponent wasn't immune, they were probably dead. Ficious Rand is overall a little bit sillier, but the OG was Flare Blitz, Darmanitan. However, I do think Brave Bird is the best of the bunch. So Brave Bird is the best flying move in the game? I think I could say that. Uh, there's no alternative you could really use that gets you anywhere close uh, to the havoc that Brave Bird can wreak. Notably, no typing is immune to flying. So if you press Brave Bird on your Choice Band Staraptor, something is taking massive damage. Okay, so Dragon Ascent might be a little bit better. And maybe Dual Wing Beat if you're Scyther in Gen 8, where it actually got Dual Wing Beat. But Bravery still has its perks. Unfortunately, Brave Bird does not strike twice. It really seems like an error on their part. And if it did hit twice, it would be better than Dual Wing Beat. Final shoutouts to Brave Bird. I think Brave Bird gets my vote for the most nerfed animation of all time. Earthquake is close. Earthquake used to have a really sick 3D animation. The current ones are terrible, but Brave Bird is really sad. Uh, in generation six and seven, it was awesome. Uh, the camera like goes into this dramatic uh, low flying dive. You gotta be really brave to use this move. And then in Gen 8, it, it got a little bit worse, but it, it was still, it still had the same idea. And in Gen 9, it just, it's just sad. It, it, it's like a really weak, like, aura bird? Like, what is this cowardice? 
It's not brave. I understand why it got changed because it's no longer a fixed camera angle, so you can't do the zoom, but could have done something better than this. Ah, who's piloting this thing? Can we, can we check their license? I guess we never mentioned it, but these three are not only clones of each other, they're all clones of Double Edge. That was the original. Now it's brine time. And brine time's over. Uh, this move's pretty bad. <laughs> That's probably better than insurance. Brine is a 65 base power water move, but it has an upside. So this is the first, it might actually be the only, execute style move. So it does more damage when the target is already damaged. So execute moves show up in a couple different like RPGs. Garen from League of Legends, at least when I played like 12 years ago, his ult used to be an execute, did more damage if the target was low on health. I think warriors in World of Warcraft literally have a move called Execute uh, that you can only use if the target is like almost dead and does a bunch of damage to them. Uh, there is an issue that a lot of these Execute moves have, which is doing more damage doesn't matter that much when the opponent doesn't have that much health to lose. So the threshold for Brine dealing double damage is higher than with these other Executes I mentioned. Brine does double damage if your opponent has half health or less. In the best case scenario, you're getting a slightly stronger Hydro Pump. Issues with that is that you are almost never reducing your opponent to exactly half, right? You're gonna reduce them to maybe like a third, at which point like the doubled damage doesn't really matter. Why are you using Brine? If you're an offensive Pokemon, you want immediate power, right? You're either gonna be using Surf or you're gonna be using Hydro Pump. You might argue, well, I mean, I guess Brine is for when you're trying to chip your opponent down. But if you're a defensive water type, you're not using Brine. There's another water move that defensive water type Pokemon use. It's pretty good. You might even say it's one of the best moves in Pokemon history. We'll talk about that someday. But what about the synergy between Hyper Fang and Brine? You can Hyper Fang with Floatzel and then Brine them. Or you could just waterfall them? Like, what are you doing? I think the only time you would actually use Brine is because you got the TM from Crash or Wake before you actually got Surf. Maybe this should be in Signature because this is the special move of Mr. Briny, right? You can see here the Pokemon that actually learn Brine. A, a lot of salty sea dogs here. We got, you know, Starmie, Gyarados, Lapras, Kabutops, uh, Convenience, Corsola, Pelipper, Hariyama. So the reason why Hariyama learns this is uh, in sumo wrestling, when you enter the ring, uh, you throw salt. So <laughs> that's why he learns Brine. Obviously, you would never do this because it's a special move, but I mean, that's kind of neat. One note about Brine is that this is definitely meta defining in the chicken breast meta. Uh, if you're trying to make chicken breast and you don't use Brine, you're going to have a very bad time. Uh, but in that case, hopefully the chicken you're using it on is already at zero HP, so you're not really worried about the damage. Brine would overall be a lot better if instead of activating at half health or below, uh, it had a bonus against opponents at full health. Enemies might not be at half health, they might just get knocked out, uh, but you always start battles at full health, right? I mean, you, you always start battles at full health, right? Bug Bite. I imagine none of you here have been struck by brave birds or wood hammers, at least I hope not. But you might have been hit by Bug Bite in real life. Wow. I know I get hit by this all the time. So Bug Bite is surprisingly legit. Uh, it's a 60 base power bug move. I know that sounds really bad, but that means it does get the technician boost. And there's a certain Pokemon you might have heard of, Scizor, who really likes biting. And it has an upside. So what Bug Bite does is it steals the opponent's berry. For the most part, that's worse than Knock Off because Knock Off just destroys all held items. But the thing about stealing the berry is that you do actually eat it. So whatever the berry benefit is, you get it instead. So it's looking like it's gonna be top of niche because I guess Scizor uses it. It's probably a lot more useful in doubles where people use a lot more berries. If you try to drum on your belly and someone eats your citrus berry, you're gonna be pretty sad. I think while we're here, we'll also just do Pluck, because Pluck is the exact same as Bug Bite, except it's a flying type version of it. 
Flying is a much better attacking type, but I, I don't think that anybody actually uses this. <laughs> like, there's no technician flyers that do this. So it just ends up being a very solid, like, filler move that you would maybe use. Shoutouts to Plucky for being one of my favorite adjectives, though. Very fun to say as well. Bug buzz. We're buzzing. I think this is a type shifted psychic, so it's 90 base power, and then it has a 10% chance to drop the opponent's special defense. If you're a special attacking bug, you're using this. Ha! <laughs> easy staple tier, easy. Uh, one nice thing about Bug Buzz is that Quiver Dance is a move you might have heard of. It's pretty good. And if you were Quiver Dancing, you were almost certainly then Bug Buzzing. Uh, they happen to pair together really well. I mean, Bug Buzz is the best special bug move. Bug is not a great attacking type, but there are some good special bugs out there. You might have heard of a certain one whose name I can't say, but the image is on screen now. Likes to buzz! And a lot of Bug Buzz's uh, weakness, as in the fact that it's resisted by everything, does get mitigated by a lot of buzzers having tinted lenses. It also is a sound move, uh, so that means that it does go through substitute. I guess that does come with downside that it gets blocked by soundproof, but who's actually soundproof, right? Substitute's more common. It's mostly upside. Next move. <laughs> Did you even see that? Bullet punch! If this was strictly Gen 4, this would be like meta-defining for sure. Because <laughs> uh, in Gen 4, uh, if you had, I think like s around 60% of your HP remaining, you were dead. Because it meant that Scissor was going to pop up and bullet punch your lights out. Uh, unfortunately, I mean, there have been generations since Gen 4, so I wouldn't say that bullet punch is meta-defining anymore, but it's still incredibly good. Way better than you would think. So it is a priority move, just like Aqua Jet. It's the exact same, except it's a steel type move. 40 base power, doesn't sound like much, but when you get stab, when you get technician, when you have 130 base attack, when you have a choice band, you can feel like you got shot. <laughs> it does a ton of damage. Uh, there's lots of Pokemon that run this just to have the option of priority move. Notably, Machamp, despite having four arms and apparently being able to punch faster than the eye can see, doesn't get mock punch. He has to settle for being as fast as a speeding bullet. Uh, Metagross can use this. Hariyama uses it. Uh, of course, if you're weak to steal, RIP, because you're going to get annihilated by this. But even if you're not, this can hurt if it comes off of a high enough attack stat. And priority moves are always useful, even if they don't do that much damage, because it allows you to pick off Focus Sash or Sturdy users. They hang on on one HP. As long as you can do one HP, you're going to knock them out. And a priority move can always do at least one. It literally has bullet in the name, so it gets blocked by bulletproof, right? I think people also tend to exaggerate how bad Steel is as an attacking type. It's not the best. Biggest thing about Steel as an attacking type is that nothing is immune to it. So you can always do at least something with Bullet Punch. And the fact that it beats fairies, which are incredibly OP, is a nice bonus as well. All right, class is in session. And don't lie to me, okay? Academic dishonesty is a serious offense. What does Captivate do? Don't Google it, okay? <laughs> Tell me, what does Captivate do? Th there's no way you actually know the answer, okay? <laughs> I've been playing Pokemon since generation one, since I was like four years old. I am now 29. <laughs> I have literally never seen this move. <laughs> Are you ready? You remember Charm? So Charm harshly lowers the target's attack. That can sometimes be useful. Captivate harshly lowers the target's special attack with a condition. For whatever reason, even though Charm works on anything, Captivate only works on the opposite gender. And if they're genderless, it just fails. Remember Attract? Remember where that went? This is so bad. <laughs> Why would you ever use Captivate? Like, think about the situation you would have to be in for Captivate to actually be useful. So first off, it doesn't even work against half of Pokemon. It's actually more than half, because if you combine the same gender as you and genderless, that's going to be more than half, right? And among the group, it actually can even affect. It only matters against the special attackers. Horrible. <laughs> Captivate, more like Craptivate. Oh, I went to school. So I'm not a Zoomer, right? I just said I'm 29. I don't know what no cap means, but no cap to Vade. Ugh. Charge Beam. Really unique move. 
So it's an electric type move, 50 base power, 90 accuracy, seems really bad so far, but you're not using this really to attack, you're using it because, hey, you've got a 7% chance to raise your special attack by one. So it's kind of a compromise between boosting your stats and dealing damage. Uh, notably, if you have Serene Grace, then it always raises your special attack, which is nice. I think in general, you would much rather run you know, Thunderbolt. But I mean, Thunderbolt is one of the best moves in the game, right? Charge Beam is all right. High niche. Uh, I'm not really sure why it's 90 accuracy. Just make it 100. And while you're at it, why not make the special attack raise 100? I, I don't think that would be that bad. You made Torch Song, right? Actually, maybe that's a bad idea because Torch Song is ridiculously overpowered. But given that Charge Beam is only 50 base power, I think it'd be fine. This is sort of like a less reliable, but sometimes better power-up punch. People sometimes use power-up punch. Hmm? It's an alternative setup move. It's a little gimmicky, but I mean, hey, you get special attack boosts most of the time. If the opponent has low enough health that charge beam would knock them out, then maybe you just get a free special attack boost. It's okay. Read the glitch part of it? Okay. Generation 9, the glitch in which Charge Beam's additional effect chance overflows has been fixed. Wait, in Generation 9, the glitch has been fixed? Who edited this wiki? Masada himself? Apparently there's a glitch. Due to a glitch, uh, if the user has Serene Grace and is under the effects of the rainbow from the combination of Fire Pledge and Water Pledge, the additional effect chance is calculated as 280%, which overflows and becomes 24%. The user having Serene Grace, that will probably happen, and is under the effect of the rainbow from the combination of Fire Pledge and Water Pledge. Well, that'll never happen, so you don't have to worry about this. Chatter. Uh, how many people are, how many people are here? What in the world? Okay, well, apparently 191 people are using Chatter right now, so I don't even know if we can put this in Signature. It, it, it's got crazy distribution. <laughs> signature move. Uh, chatter is... Actually, a really interesting move. There's a lot to talk about with this thing. So it was previously 60 base power, but they buffed it to 65. I'm sure that's the chatter buff you're expecting me to mention. So chatter has a bunch of unique mechanics. So first of all, this is the signature move of... The Pokemon is so bad I can't even remember it. Chatot. <laughs> it literally has chat in its name. And how you actually used Chatter was because this was on the DS and the DS had a microphone, you actually had to shout a phrase like into the mic that got played back during Chatter. And the louder you were, the greater the confusion chance. Like I'm not making this up, this is really how the move worked. Now that interaction actually led to the move being banned, not for power levels, but as you can imagine, Having a move play back a certain voice file could lead to some complications for a family-friendly company such as Nintendo, so Chatter was banned. More relevant than the 5 base power buff uh, is the fact that Chatter now has a confusion chance of 100%, so it's just super Confuse Ray. Confuse Ray is actually pretty bad, especially since the nerf to Confusion, where it's only a 33% chance for Confusion to inflict self-damage. But if it's stapled to a 60 base power move, that's actually not that bad at all. Unfortunately, it is on Chatot. So you'll probably never actually see Chatter. But I think a lot of Pokemon would actually run Chatter if they could. And you can by joining these live streams, by subscribing, perhaps joining the Discord, perhaps evolving into a mighty Patreon. Close combat. Are you ready? Our very first meta-defining move for the tier list. I do not think it's an exaggeration to say that close combat is part of the reason why fairy types exist. So fighting types for generations one to three were like, okay, fighting has always been a really good offensive type, but they just, they had no moves. It like submission, what? Cross chop was good 80% uh, of the time. Superpower. I mean, the move was called Superpower, but it had a hideous drawback. 120 power, 100 accuracy is great, but dropping your attack and your defense, the attack drop is what really killed it. With close combat, you don't get the attack drop. Close combat is 120 base power, 100 accuracy, and it drops your defenses, so it has no drawback. 
If you can learn close combat, you are almost certainly using it. Insanity. This is still the best fighting move to this day. It is crazy. Star Raptor loves this move. Everybody loves this move. I guess fighting types were just training for the first three gens, because Gen 4 is where fighting really became one of the best types in the game, and in Gen 5, it became so good that they had to start hiring some fairies. What's the Japanese translation? Infaito! I like close combat better. <laughs> Remember the CQC basic snake. One of the nice things about close combat as well is that this is one of the very few Gen 4 moves that actually had a good animation in Gen 4. So Gen 4 has an infamously slow and laggy uh, battle interface, but that actually works for close combat because, you know, whap them for like three seconds. I said earlier that close combat doesn't have a drawback. I was kidding a little bit. It does have a drawback. I think close combat is actually very well balanced. So in single player, yeah, it doesn't have a drawback because you just kill your opponent. But in competitive, the defense drop is very relevant. So in competitive, you are going to get hit. Uh, so that means you have to account for the defense drops of close combat. Maybe your opponent doesn't get knocked out by your hit and taking the defense drops means that you will get knocked out. So you gotta be careful. Even if close combat knocks out the opponent, now you're more vulnerable to the next Pokemon that comes in. What if they outspeed you? What if they can hit you with a priority move? Because you just lowered your defenses, you are now in a position of vulnerability. That's the price of getting in close. Overall, excellent move. Copycat. This is one of the cheesiest moves ever. <laughs> I think we really have to read the description of copycat. Okay, maybe we don't have to read the whole description because it's kind of long. The important part is up here. Causes the user to use the last move that was used in the battle, even if the last move was by the user. So normally, this is just bad. You would rather just choose a move that actually does something instead of relying on the previous move being something useful. However, copycat is not meant to be used in a straightforward manner. This move is the king of cheese. <laughs> so one thing you used to do is Riolu has Prankster, which means that its non-attacking moves get priority. And this move doesn't technically do any damage, so it gets priority. What does that mean? So you could also use a move called Circle Throw. Circle Throw is 60 base power, and it switches the opponent out. However, because it is a phasing move, it has like negative six priority. So you're always going to go second. What you can do is you can equip a Focus Sash, you can Circle Throw them, you'll survive because of your Focus Sash, and now the last move used was Circle Throw. Now you can copycat it. So instead of having minus six priority, it has plus one. So now your opponent is stuck, eternally tumbling in an Ouroboros of <laughs> entry hazard damage. <laughs> Horrible. Definitely a gig gimmick because then you can just bullet Surprise. punch Riolu and knock it out. Uh, but if you can't do that, I guess you lose. The Endless Now. Get me out of here. So similar to Assist, which we covered in Generation 3, you can use Copycat as part of the Dive Cats strategy. I'm not going to go full into depth here. You can watch the Gen 3 tier list. But the basic strategy is using the interaction between Lagging Tail and Priority to become invulnerable using dive. Really silly. <laughs> Not a good strategy, but definitely a fun one. Just for the sake of completeness, here are the moves that Copycat can no longer call. I'm not gonna read out this whole chart, but here it is on screen if you want to reference it later. Anything else to say about Copycat? Anything else to say about Copycat? Anything else to say about Copycat? Anything else to- CROSS POISON! Uh, one of, I think, three cross moves? There's a lot of these, right? I mean, you got uh, Cross Chop, Cross Poison, and x is coming up, so Triple X. Uh, Vin Diesel loves this move. Poison is the worst attacking type in the entire game. Cross Poison, I mean, it could be worse. It does some damage. It's 70 base power, 10% chance to poison, and it has high crit. Overall, I would much rather have the extra base power from Poison Jab rather than the high crit. This isn't the worst thing ever. Drapion can use it for Sniper. 
クロスポイゾンスプリットアタック I wouldn't be too excited about springing a trap where the end goal is the cross poison. Ugh. In Generation 9, it is one of the signature moves of Eternatus. What? I guess one thing. Sort of wondering what the connection between all these cross moves is? I guess it's that they all have high crit, right? Yeah, that must be it. And here, here's a fun thing. So you've probably seen. Games like Monster Hunter、uh, Generations、uh, or Xenoblade Chronicles X.、Uh, in Japanese, you actually pronounce it as cross. So it would be Xenoblade Chronicles Cross or Monster Hunter Cross. It's very weird. Crush Grip! <laughs> Signature move of Reggie Gigas. Reggie Gigas! <laughs> God. Rush grip. It's an anti execute move? I don't know what you would call that. Like a pardon move? I have no idea. So, how crush grip works is the higher the opponent's health is, the more damage this does. Now, that's much better than an execute move because every Pokemon starts the battle at full health, right? I mean, you start battles at full health, right? So, you would expect that since this move has a condition, The payoff for meeting that condition would be significant, right? Like, I don't know, a 200 base power at full health? Maybe 150? Max is out at 121. Just use return, bro. Does Regigigas actually use Crush Grip? No. Would other Pokemon use Crush Grip if they could? Probably not. If you're running Regigigas and Crush Grip, I'd say to you one of two things either get your act together or get a grip. And since we're talking about Crush Grip, we can talk about the alternative to Crush Grip, which is all the way at the very bottom here Ring Out. So you might be wondering what's the difference between Crush Grip and Ring Out? Aren't they the exact same thing? Why is Crush Grip Regigigas only? While Ring Out actually has kind of wide distribution, a bunch of like tentacly Pokemon get Ring Out? Are you ready? My entire worldview was shattered when I looked up Ring Out. So hang on, let me, let me, let me show you something. Here are some pajama pants. I'm gonna use Ring Out right now. <laughs> Ugh, all right, really,、uh, really wrung that cloth out using、uh, my physical strength, although I am a special attacker. Apparently, it actually used my 109 special attack to calculate damage. Why in the world is this a special move? <laughs> And this is in the generation that introduced the physical special split. So they did this on purpose.、Uh, and it's not a translation thing either, because the Japanese is also ring out. So it's a special move that makes contact? Would any of these Pokemon ever in a million years use ring out? Oh, Chikorita gets it. You gotta breed a special Chikorita just to have the privilege of using ring out. So Licky Licky gets stab on it. Has 85 attack and 80 special attack. Tangrowth actually has higher special attack than attacks. Maybe Tangrowth? Well, it's not like anyone really needs normal coverage, but theoretically it does okay damage. Filler outclassed? Dark Pulse. This one is pretty straightforward.、Uh, 80 base power special dark move with a chance to flinch. If you're a special attacking dark type, probably gonna use this. It's good. I also really like the description for Dark Pulse. I think it says, unleashes an aura imbued with vile thoughts. Oh, so vile that you flinch 20% of the time. And it is a pulse move, so it gets powered up by Mega Launcher. And has a fun sound effect. Do, 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 do. Ah. Dark Void. It is a signature move,、uh, but if it wasn't, probably put it in meta defining. <laughs> Uh, this also might be the most nerfed move of all time. So, Dark, Dark Void used to be absolutely crazy. Dark Void was the signature move of Dark Ride, and it's an 80% chance to sleep the opponent. Now, Sleep Powder is 75% chance. I, I mean, Dark Void's not that much better. So, Dark Void hits both opponents. <laughs> So, Dark Void used to be like pretty much an instant win button in doubles. It was disgusting. Smeargle. Uh, used AI to trace Dark Void and use it for his own. Really stupid. So, I think it definitely did need a nerf. I think they also nerfed it way too much because Dark Void now has 50 accuracy. RIP. 
<laughs> it is now worse than hypnosis, really sad. I think it should be that it's 80% accurate against single target, and then against two targets is 50%. I think that would be fair. Uh, but no, <laughs> now Dark Void sent to the Dark Void of the Shadow Realm. You should never use this anymore. Uh, but back in the day, as in before the very recent nerf, this move was crazy. Another nerf is that your counterfeit art no longer has any buyers, okay? If you try to use Dark Void and you're not actually Darkrai, it no longer works. Defend Order, another signature move of Vespiquin. Uh, it's literally cosmic power, <laughs> it's the exact same. Increases your defense and your special defense by one stage, presumably with a wall of combies, so it really sucks to be a combi. Not only do you never evolve, uh, you have to die defending Vespiquin, who will also die, even with plus one, plus one defenses, because it's a Vespiquin. Signature move. Does Vespiquin use it? I, I, I guess, sometimes? Would other Pokemon use it? Yeah, because other Pokemon use Cosmic Power, and Defend Order is Cosmic Power. Plus flavor. How come Game Freak lets you have three signature moves? Execute Order 415. I think that's Combi's dex number. Defog. Gen 4 is infamous for being an HM hellscape where you spend your entire salary paying your team of HM employees. I think you needed like eight. One of them is Defog which does nothing but remove an incredibly annoying accuracy and visibility reducing field effect on like two routes in the entire game. Now, if you look at the effect of Defog, Defog lowers the target's evasion one stage. Even if the target is behind a substitute, such upside, it bypasses accuracy checks to always hit, wow, unless the target is in the semi-invulnerable turn of a move such as Digger Fly. Defog clears away any fog on the field, as well as light screen, reflect, safeguard, miss, spikes, toxic spikes, and stealth rock on the target side of the field. Now, if you read that quickly, you might be thinking, oh, it's like better rapid spin. Uh, read it again. It clears these effects on the target side. So that means if you set up stealth rocks and spikes against your opponent, it clears the entry hazards for them. Not only does this move do nothing, it actively helps your opponent. This is one of the worst moves of all time. Meta defining, by the way. So keep in mind, this is taking into account all generations. So Default got a massive buff in generation six onward. Now in addition to the fact that it clears your opponent's entry hazards, which is a downside, it also clears yours, which is a huge upside. Uh, it is now an alternative to Rapid Spin. Rapid Spin is still better because Rapid Spin leaves your hazards on the enemy side, but Rapid Spin is also much more difficult to use. Far fewer Pokemon get Rapid Spin. You can also stop Rapid Spin by sending in a Ghost type. You can't stop Defog outside of Taunting. I think that's the only way to do it. And a ton of Pokemon actually get Defog. Pretty much any Dwinged creature can Defog. Entry Hazards are really powerful. So if you're not using Entry Hazards, you can run Defog and decide that your opponent isn't using them either. I guess it also lowers your opponent's evasion. <laughs> Apparently because of the stat lowering effect, Golden Go can block Defog, so watch out. As if Golden Go wasn't pay to win enough already. I guess we can say that the evasion drop is mostly downsized because that means that it can be blocked by Golden Go. It also means that if you Defog against a Defiant Pokemon, they're about to hit you really hard. Discharge! Overall, it's weaker Thunderbolt. Uh, you lose some base power, but you gain some Paralysis Chance. It's got a 30% Paralysis Chance, which is pretty hefty. Uh, if you get smacked by Discharge, a third of the time you're gonna end up uh, a little paralyzed. The main use of Discharge is that it is a spread move, uh, which means that it hits both opponents. It also hits your ally, which sometimes you might actually want to do. So for that reason, uh, Discharge is actually quite useful in doubles. Uh, somebody just typed Disquake Gaming. Yep. Uh, if your partner is a ground type, they just ignore Discharge. They can't be hit by it. Sometimes they might have Motor Drive, <laughs> Gen 4 Electivire. Hey. And it's okay in singles. Like, it, it's not that bad at all. Maybe like above Aquatel? Discharge has enough base power that it is sometimes worth the drop in power for the extra paralysis chance. Honorably Discharged. So apparently Lava Plume is just a hot version of Discharge, so we may as well do Lava Plume as well. 30% burn chance on a move is really good. I think it's 
kind of strange that hot water and lava have the same burn chance, but okay. It's generally more difficult to use Lava Plume in doubles because fire immunities are far more rare than electric immunities. It's a fire type Scott. So Lava Plume ends up being a bit better in singles, very high burn chance for a singles move. And it's a little bit lower in doubles because you might end up hitting your ally a bit more frequently. Ah, uh, that's true. In doubles, you would probably just be using Heat Wave anyway, because Heat Wave doesn't hit your partner. Double hit! Uh, I got made fun of once in the, I think it was the Japanese trailer explanation for Legends Arceus. Because uh, I saw a move in Japanese, I didn't know what it was. In Japanese, it was double attack. It ended up being double hit. <laughs> I didn't know this because nobody ever uses double hit. <laughs> so it's 35 base power, but it hits twice. So it's overall 70. Why would you ever use this instead of return? I guess the answer would be if you're Ambipom with Technician, but even then, Double Hit has 90 accuracy for like a oh, oh, super teeny advantage over Return, so you would probably just use Return. I, I guess the advantage of Double Hit is that it could break the sub and then hit them again with your 35 base power normal move? Ah. Uh. Uh, it's very good for killing yourself on recoil, like Rocky Helmet and Thorns. Yeah, the exact numbers, a technician boosted double hit is 105 compared to return at 102. And you lose 10% accuracy for that. No thanks. A lot of moves were reworked for Legends Arceus, but the double hit rework is, is completely different. So double hit is now a status move with 10 PP that causes the user to become primed. Uh, causing its attacks moves to deal 50% more damage. It also increases the user's action speed. It's actually pretty good in Arceus. You would use it because it, it's a weird, like, buff move. Draco Meteor. It's definitely Draco Meteor, right? I think the announcer in Battle Revolution says Draco Meteor. Pounded by Draco Meteor. It's definitely Draco. Uh, this might be the coolest move in the entire game. <laughs> you like summon a bunch of meteors to smack your opponent for 140 base power. It has since been nerfed to 130 base power. Comes with a downside. Uh, it does drop your special attack by two stages, which is a pretty severe downside, but there's ways around it. This is a contender for meta defining, but I, I think I'm just gonna settle for like top of staple. Uh, this is a type shifted overheat. It's incredibly strong. There's a ton of dragon types with really good special attack where you can just wear some specs and just delete your enemy with a hail of meteors and then switch out to negate the stat drop or just stay in and do it again. It's so strong you can actually do that. Uh, this works really well on mixed attackers. So Salamence is typically a physical attacker. Usually you want to be using its physical attacks, but it also has a really good special attack stat. I think it actually has one more special attack than me. I have 109, a Salamence is 110. If you're not planning to use your special attack stat, you can just have Draco Meteor. You don't have to worry about the special attack drop. And then if a physical wall comes in, just Meteor them. <laughs> you can also use this for a really fun crit cheese build on Kingdra because of the new crit mechanics. If you focus energy and have a scope lens, you will have 100% crit. So because Kingdra has Sniper, it'll end up being more than a nasty plot boost would. And crits ignore your own negative stat drops, so you can just spam Draco Meteor. It's not that good, but it is pretty fun, and it's not, like, horrible. Alright, we actually are gonna go ahead and put this in meta, because along with close combat, this was a big part of the reason why Fairy even exists. Because if you played in Gen 4 or 5, you were getting Meteored, like, every turn. <laughs> it was disgusting. Uh, notably, Penny gives you this move at the end of the Starfall Street arc. Uh, it goes very well uh, with her signature Pokemon, which is the Dragon-type Evolution that they introduced in Generation 9. We can also talk about the name of this move. A lot of moves on this list actually appeared in a much older video I made, which was Top 10 Moves That Make More Sense in Japanese. Uh, so Draco Meteor ends up being really cool in English as well, but in Japanese, it's a pun. So the Japanese word for shooting star is Ryuseigun, which means literally like flowing star mass, but Ryu, which is flowing, is also dragon. They sound the same, so it's also like dragon star mass. Cool move! 
Uh, one interesting thing about Draco Meteor is that its distribution is actually tied to dragon typing. So for a while you had to actually be a dragon type to be taught Draco Meteor, which means that uh, Pokemon like me who gain dragon typing through a mega evolution, because we're not a real dragon, we don't actually get to use the meteors. I think that's unfair, okay? I don't know why they're so typist. I'm a dragon in my heart, okay? As long as I have the stone and the mechanic is in the game. Someday, guys. A Draco Meteor is a type shifted overheat, so I think now is a good time to talk about Leaf Storm, which is also a type shifted overheat. Unfortunately, that type was shifted to grass. It probably is the best, or one of the best uh, special grass moves out there. All of the same upsides of Draco Meteor and Overheat apply. Super strong move. Unfortunately, it's a grass move. This does get special credit for being the move of Contrary Superior. Because when used by Superior with Contrary, instead of dropping your special attack by two, it increases it by two. So it's nasty plot plus a 140 base power stab move. Even if it's grass, uh, you're getting hurt. This is the real Razor Leaf. It's in a storm. Watch out. Dragon Pulse. Very straightforward. 85 base power special dragon move, no additional effects. I think you'd rather run Draco Meteor because oftentimes the immediate power is more important. Used to be 90 base power, but it got nerfed by 5. I guess it was just too good. Uh, this is a pulse move, so it does get powered up by Mega Launcher, which is nice. But this is pretty underwhelming, I would say, even though it is, even though I am putting it in staples. Because usually you don't run Dragon for coverage. Dragon is very bad coverage, but it's very good stab. Dragon Rush, Dragon Rush. Maybe this is a conspiracy? I think this is a move that was added to nerf NPCs. So it's 100 base power, which sounds good. It's 70 accuracy. That's bad. I think they added this to give it to Cynthia's Garchomp to make it weaker. Because then, like, if you're like a three-year-old kid who has no idea what you're doing, occasionally Garchomp will miss you because he's using Dragon Rush. Filler for sure. I don't know why you would ever do this. I mean, it's got 100 base power. That's a lot. 70% of the time it, it does something. I think it also has a flinch chance. Sure. I think it, it's kind of like Swordmasters being a mostly enemy class. Because when Swordmasters are on your side of the field, they're giga garbage in most games. But when Swordmasters are on the enemy side of the field, they like double and crit your axe users. It's really sad. So like how Swordmasters are an enemy unit that you can also use, Dragon Rush is an enemy move that you can also use if you want. So fun fact, as of Gen 6, Dragon Rush has the stomp quality of doing double damage and ignoring the accuracy boost of Minimize. So if your opponent minimizes, you can rush him. I don't know what this scenario is where you're fighting an opponent with Minimize with a Pokemon that has Dragon Rush, but in that scenario, yeah, it's pretty good. The anime made Dragon Rush look OP. I think there's a scene in like the Mega Evolution special where like a Garchomp uses Dragon Rush and then the target like just stands there because Dragon Rush had like the quality of like terrifying you and freezing you in place. Well, if it does that, why does it have 75% accuracy? Dragon Rush is a move that focuses the body into a weapon and strikes with incredible power. Any opponent loses its ability to escape from it. You fool, you ignited the emblem. Dragon Rush, Alir can't use it. Okay, it, enough Fire Emblem. It's my fault, I shouldn't have mentioned Swordmasters. You could theoretically do Dragon Rush with like Hone Claws, because Hone Claws increases your attack and your accuracy. But I think there's another dragon type boosting move that you might want to use instead, even if it's not centered on the screen. Whoops. Drain Punch. It's just like Nosferatu. I, I, I've ignited the fire emblem and now we can't extinguish it. Uh, Drain Punch is overall really good. Uh, it got two major buffs. So it used to be 5 PP and only had a base power of 60. So that made it really bad for sustaining yourself because you didn't do that much damage, so you didn't heal that much, and you also only had five PP. So if your plan was to set up and then like tank with Drain Punch, you really couldn't because you would just run out of PP. Even if you had the mighty big root equipped, you were probably gonna be forced out 
sooner rather than later. Then there were huge buffs. Uh, so now the base power got increased to 75, very nice buff. And perhaps even more importantly, you got five extra PP. So now you can bulk up and start punching. Kind of sinister. I don't really know how you're absorbing their life force. This is like a Jojo thing. It's kind of scary. Very, very reasonable base power. And often on the bulky Pokemon that use this, you hit so hard that you get like multiple turns of leftovers recovery in a single punch. It's actually pretty good. I'm, I'm going to put it like here. Drain Punch sees a lot of use. It's very strong. Uh, this was also key in the only A run. This is the sustain mode of Monkey. Okay. Look forward to that video coming out soon-ish. We'll see. Earth Power. Really cool animation. Uh, you create like a Gaia wow. explosion under the opponent. Isaac for Smash, by the way. I don't mean as an assist trophy, okay? I don't care about move. I want Earth Power! Type shifted Psychic, I think? Uh, it's a special ground move with a chance of reducing the opponent's special defense, uh, but it'll never do that because you're getting the sheer force boost on Needle King, who's using Earth Power. There's not that many special attacking ground types. It's Needle King, who actually has higher physical attack, but his better moves are all special. And then there's Camera Up, who I guess is a special attacker? Claydol? Uh. It's very good coverage. I guess Skeledurge would use this. Or I'll put it below Aura Sphere. There's just not that many Pokemon that use this, but it is very good for the Pokemon that do use it. I guess I'll say here, like I wouldn't pay that much attention to the tiering within the tiers. They're like slightly ordered. There's also not really any other special attacking ground options. There are some, we're gonna cover at least one later in this list, but I think Earth Power is definitely the best of them. Embargo. Embargo has exactly one use. And that is teaching kids the word embargo, because Spiritomb used this on me, and I had to look it up. What the hell is an embargo? Well, in the context of Pokemon, it's a useless move. Wow, this move sucks. So what does embargo actually do? Embargo is one of those moves, I think like Dragon Rush, that is meant for NPCs to use on you. Embargo prevents you from using your held item, and it also prevents you from using item items like as the trainer. So if you want to use Big Pharma, finally, legislation has been passed. This embargo is destroying Big Pharma. You cannot use healing items. NPCs don't really use healing items, so you won't, don't really want to use this against them. If you wanted to use healing items, I guess you can't, but good news, the opponent just wasted their turn, so you're probably going to win anyway. If I was being very generous, I guess I would describe Embargo as a budget knockoff? It's got to be budget because you don't have any money because of the trade embargo. Like, describing it as bad knockoff is being incredibly generous. So let's compare this to knockoff. If you embargo the enemy, they can't use their item for five turns. If you knock off the enemy, they can't use their item ever because it's gone and because they're dead, because Embargo has crazy power. The Embargo lobby was, was in my head because I said Embargo had crazy power, I meant knockoff. Uh, knockoff also can't be stopped by taunt because knockoff is an attack, whereas Embargo can be stopped by taunt because it doesn't do any damage. I guess you could say Embargo is the knockoff of knockoff. <laughs> I guess in a meta sense, from Gen 9 onwards, Embargo has been embargoed, because you can't use it anymore. I don't think anyone will miss it though, and not just because it has 100 accuracy. The embargo is super effective against me, because you can't import cheese if there's an Embargo. Embargo choose another move, oh. Energy Ball! Lend me your energy to deal 90 base power of grass damage. Okay. So Energy Ball has pretty good distribution? But overall, if you can learn both Energy Ball and the new buffed Giga Drain, you would usually rather use the Giga Drain, because the healing effect of Giga Drain is actually pretty relevant a lot of the time. But Energy Ball at 90 base power with wide distribution, some Pokemon would use it. Notably, if used by a Jellicent, Energy Ball not only knocks out the other Pokemon, it also knocks out their trainer and several other innocent spectators. <laughs> Never forget. For those who don't know, there was an incident back in the day where uh, I think a Smogon mod named Somalia was caught off guard by a Jellicent running Energy Ball, and he had a bit of an overreaction, I guess, overreaction, I guess you could say. <laughs> faint. And unlike Faint Attack, they spelled this right the first time around. So Faint, if you're a real-life Psychic type in a double battle, is really good. So it has a very specific 
and powerful effect. So what Feint does is it has really high priority. If your opponent protects and you use Feint against them, you'll hit them for like 30 base power through protect, that doesn't really matter. But the important part is that it cancels their protect. So if you correctly predict that your opponent will protect, you can feint and then open them up to an attack from your partner. I'm sure that feint has won a couple people some battles. Uh, in singles, obviously, you would never use this. But if you're a genius in doubles, it's pretty good. I put in the wrong tier, sorry. Uh, that was just me using feint, yeah. <laughs> this is one of the only moves in the same priority bracket as extreme speed plus two. So you could use this as like a poor man's quick attack, where a quicker attack, but in exchange for going even faster, you lose 10 base power. I don't think you would ever do that, but you can. Fire Fang. Flareon's best stab move until Gen 6. I think we'll talk about all the Fangs together because they're the same, they're just different types. They're all pretty good. So the Elemental Fangs are Ice Fang, Fire Fang, and Thunder Fang. They're all the same except for their typing. Compared to the Elemental Punches, you lose 10 base power in exchange for some different effects. The punches are generally better, but if you go with the fangs, you get a flinch chance, which almost never happens. You also lose five accuracy because I <laughs> couldn't make it a hundred. That would make them too strong. Uh, some people are a little bit wary about these being in staples and not filler or niche. Uh, oftentimes, if you're running these, it's because you can't punch because you perhaps lack the limbs. But one definite upside that these three have is that if you've got a strong jaw, you can do 50% more damage with these. So on strong, strong jaw Pokemon, these moves are really good. If you've got strong jaw, I think these out damage like Ice Beam, Flamethrower, Thunderbolt, at least in their new nerfed versions, pretty good. And even if you don't have strong jaw, these moves aren't like disastrous. You just wish they did a little bit more damage, but just having moves of these types can be very useful. People want these in niche? People are so harsh. We put the elemental punches in staples. I think these should also be in staples. Fire Fang does have the special ability to vanquish cheaters. So if you have Wonder Guard hacked onto some Pokemon, the only way to get through is to Fire Fang them. For some reason, it hits through Wonder Guard. <laughs> he got some really strong teeth, I guess. Everyone hates the Four Fangs. <laughs> Well, we don't have uh, Poison Fang on here. That was last gen, right? All right a, a bunch of dentists in the chat who really hate the fangs. We'll put them at the top of niche. How about that? I would consider them staple if you've got strong jaws. Otherwise, I guess they're like okay coverage moves. Man, all these fang haters, they must be playing Pokemon Frown. Flash Cannon. I, I thought this was Magnet Bomb, but I guess it's a different move. Flash Cannon! Uh, this is the premier special attacking steel move. Where's Dragon Pulse? There you go. Are you a special attacking steel type named Lucario or Magnezone? Or Empoleon? I, I guess it will use Flash Cannon. So yeah, Flash Cannon, 80 base power, 100 accuracy. I think it has a chance to lower the target's special defense. So it's a type shifted psychic, I think. It'll say at the bottom. You can see variations of the move Crunch. So I guess it is a special steel version of Crunch. I guess that's fitting since we just talked about the fangs. Uh, formerly a variation of Energy Ball. So through some series of connections, Crunch, Flash Cannon, Energy Ball, and Shadow Ball are all related. Okay. If you've got a fairy problem, you might consider arming a flash cannon and firing at them. Fling. After you hit it with Captivate, it's followed up with a fling. A really weird move. <laughs> with a, a bunch of potentially useful effects. So the gimmick with fling is that its effects, its base power, they all depend on your held item, which you then chuck at the opponent, it conks him on the head, and something happens. What happens? <laughs> I'm not reading this, okay? Uh, all you have to know is that Iron Ball is 130 base power uh, if you fling it, and perhaps notably, these items, if you fling, have an effect, either burning, flinching, paralyzing, and if you use a TR, the base power of the TR becomes the power of fling, so you can fling overheat 
to do 130 base power of dark damage without actually having the iron ball downsides. You'd probably use TR-43, uh, or I guess 71 Leaf Storm instead of iron ball for that fling. A very complicated uh, and, and fun move that sometimes can be useful. But generally, I would rather have an item instead of tossing it at my opponent. One of the big uses for fling would be for unburden or for acrobatics. Uh, with acrobatics, you don't actually need to lose your item, so you could just start with no item. But for unburdened, you have to actually lose your item, so fling is one way to do that. Fling plus acrobatics Pelipper, now we're cooking? That sounds like something Bunet would cook, no thanks. Focus Blast. Hundred and twenty base power fighting move special. Seventy accuracy. Yeah. People call this thing focus miss for a reason, but you're gonna use it because you don't have any other choices. <laughs> I think ironically, even though focus blast is less accurate than Stone Edge, it doesn't feel as bad to use because with focus blast you kind of just expect it to miss. And if you do hit, oh hey, it's your lucky day. There's lots of Pokemon where Focus Blast is their only option, and it is a powerful option. 70% of the time, it's really good. 30% of the time, you just threw the battle. <laughs> if you want to use Focus Blast and get Stab and never miss, equip Choice Specs on your Machamp, <laughs> drop your guard and go to town. The enemy won't expect that, I guarantee it. Force Palm! I think this is Lucario's side B? Uh, it's like a command grab in Smash, uh, where if they're close, you grab them, but if they're far away, you like shoot them with like energy. Uh, neither of those happen in the actual Pokemon game. I think it's 60 base power with a 30% chance to paralyze. It's like fighting dragon breath. It's, it's okay. Uh, as far as filler moves go, this one's not bad. I don't know if any technicians have forceful palms. Maybe Breloom? Am I crazy? Oh, Breloom does have it. Uh, it used to run low sweep, but then they buffed low sweep to 65, so it no longer gets the technician boost. So you could make this 90 base power with technician Breloom. That's pretty good, even though it doesn't even have palms at all. Gastro Acid. Well, it's no Garbotoxin. So what Gastro Acid does is disable the opponent's ability. When are you going to use a move to disable your opponent's ability? Almost never. Can I say never? You could use this for Giga Gimmicks, you can Gastro Acid your partner slacking, and then you get to move twice. Unfortunately, you're using a slacking. What are you doing? I guess you could troll Gliscor with this, because if it loses Poison Heal, then it's actually gonna take damage from Poison. You can use it on Regigigas, and then Crush Grip them. You're probably gonna lose, but I guess you get the moral victory. Is this just bad? So what is something that you might want to do? What if the opponent has an incredibly powerful ability, like Golden Goes, Good as Gold? That's something you might actually want to negate. Too bad Good as Gold makes you immune to having Good as Gold negated by Gastro Acid. <laughs> Guess we can also talk about Worry Seed. So Worry Seed does the same thing, except instead of negating the ability, it replaces it with Insomnia. This is definitely something you probably don't want to use on your opponents because usually giving them Insomnia is an upside because Insomnia is a good ability. You could use this on your allies and then instead of no ability, you get Insomnia, which is okay. So sometimes it's better, sometimes it's worse. But either way, it's bad. I guess Shedinja quakes when he sees these. That's, that's about it. Both of these are so much worse than Mold Breaker, which is sort of negating your opponent's ability passively or neutralizing gas which is also like a passive negation of every ability on the field. Those are so much better. Worry Seed, your Delibird for triple no sleep ability action. Gotta meet those deadlines for his deliveries. I guess if you Worry Seed the opponent, they can no longer use rest. Cool. Giga Impact. Horrible. Hyper Beam got to be a lot higher up because Hyper Beam at least existed in Gen 1 with I think the fair version of Hyper Beam, where if you knocked out your opponent, you didn't have to recharge, uh, which was huge. It actually made it a high risk, high reward move, 
With this, it's like very little reward and you lose the game. It's horrible. Losing your next turn is about the worst drawback you could have. You're basically surrendering at that point. It is so bad. Giga Impact is good. Write down the names of everybody who says Giga Impact slacking is good. I want their names on a list, okay? We're gonna deal with them harshly. No, Giga Impact slacking is not good. Slacking loses every other turn because of Truant. The thing is, your Truant turn, you can switch out. Your Giga Impact turn, you cannot. You are stuck doing nothing. If your opponent knows 100% that you are doing nothing, you are about to lose. <laughs> because they can use that turn to do whatever they want. They can set up a sub, they can use a setup move. It is over. Under zero circumstances in a normal battle should you ever use a recharge move. I think the only reason that the type shifted ones like Blast Burn got to be a little bit higher up was because you could use them as just the base for a G-Max move. And that was it. Apparently, Kartana could do Normalium Z Giga Impact in Gen 7. We'll put it above Ring Out. How about that? I'd rather use Genshin Impact. I don't like that game. I also wish they kept the Gen 1 mechanic of the Hyper Beam Recharge. I know it was a bug, but I think it actually ends up being quite fair. That or these moves should be like 200 base power. Like, this could literally be a 100% Oko move, and I still wouldn't use it. It's that bad. Grass Knot. Who would win? A gigantic rock snake. Or like two, two little blades of grass. Apparently the grass. Uh, what makes Grass Knot super good is that a bunch of Pokemon learn it. It's got really good distribution. So it is a weight-based move. The heavier opponent is, the more damage they take from this. But what Pokemon are you normally targeting with this? Rock and ground types, right? Which tend to be really, really heavy. Oh, useful. Put it with like energy ball? Pretty good coverage move. Unfortunately, it is a grass move though. Okay. Infernape loves it. I have to confess that I lied to you <laughs> in the Gen 9 tier list. I said that three segment Dunsparce was purely cosmetic. Apparently, three segment Dunsparce is strictly better than two segment because you deal more damage with heavy slam and like weight based moves, but you don't take more damage from grass knot. Better farm for that 1% chance for the three segment, otherwise you're not playing optimally with your Dedunsparce. <laughs> also, Grass Nod, despite tripping them with like blades of grass, it's a special move, but it also makes contact. I don't get it. Now Scizor, despite being kinda heavy and having quadruple resist, if you're scared of Grass Nod, don't worry, you can always run light metal. Do you understand the gravity of this situation? Probably not, because who in the world knows how gravity actually works? This has got to be the most weird field effect in the game. Gravity is a non-damaging psychic move introduced in Gen 4. So if it doesn't do damage, what does it do? Okay. And she didn't know this was a physics class. Gravity causes the field to undergo intense gravity. This effect lasts five turns. It fails if used when gravity is in effect. During intense gravity, the accuracy of all moves, except Oko moves, is multiplied by five over three in generation four, or 6,840 over 4,096, approximately 1.67 in gen five onwards. Intense gravity causes all Pokemon on the field to become grounded. Grounded Pokemon lose their immunity to ground type moves due to their flying type. Levitate ability, effects of Magnet Rise or Telekinesis, or their Held Air Balloon. Grounded Pokemon are now also vulnerable to Arena Trap and Entry Hazards. Poison type Pokemon that are usually airborne will remove toxic spikes when switched in during the effects of gravity. Grounded Pokemon also become affected by terrains. Intense gravity also prevents Pokemon from using the moves Bounce, Fly, Flying Press, High Jump Kick, Jump Kick, Magnet Rise, Sky Drop, Splash, and Telekinesis. If a Pokemon is in the semi-invulnerable turn of Fly or Bounce when gravity is used, that move is cancelled immediately. If Pokemon has no other usable moves besides the moves blocked by gravity, it will use Struggle. 
Using Grav Apple under intense gravity has 50% increased power. What? In Generation 5 only, due to a glitch, if gravity is used while two Pokemon are in the semi invulnerable state of Sky Drop, gravity will bring the user of Sky Drop down, but the target of Sky Drop will be stuck, unable to move in the semi invulnerable state until the effect of gravity ends. The user of Sky Drop switches out, or is knocked out, or the Pokemon affected by Sky Drop is knocked out. This can only occur in double or triple battles. In later generations, both the user and the target are properly brought down. If powered up by Psychium Z into Z Gravity, the user's special attack stat is raised by one stage. So is it any good? Thank goodness it stops Splash. So the main thing you would want to do with this, in singles I would say no, I wouldn't use this, but in doubles, because it forces everything to the ground, you can then Earthquake everything. Including your partner, I guess, so maybe you don't want to do this. I don't know, it hard counters Z-Splash because you can't splash at all. I'm sure some astrophysicist at, like, Team Star or Team Rocket can figure out something to do with this. It does counter Sky High Rotom. Use it with Earth Eater Orthworm, it's true! Earth Eater Orthworm uh, would be, I think, the only thing that can actually negate Earthquake if grounded. I guess Rhyperior really likes this because then you can quake everything and your Stone Edge will no longer miss. So that's something. Guard Swap. People are saying that this ruins Shuckle's day. You fool, that's not this move. So Guard Swap swaps defensive stat changes with your opponent. If you used close combat and lowered your own defense while your opponent used iron defense and then you guard swapped, now you would have plus two defense and your opponent would have minus one defense. No. Nobody is boosting their defenses almost ever. Theoretically, if they are doing that, then this is better than just using Haze or Clear Spog to remove that, but it is so specific. This is never happening. I think we'll also mention Power Swap, because it's the same, but you steal their offensive boosts. Offensive boosts are far more common than defensive boosts, but also, you might not have the right stats to take advantage of their boosts that you just stole from them. I guess you can use this to bounce Intimidate onto them? In reality, you would never spend a turn doing either of these things. No thanks. And since we're talking about very specific stat swapping moves, I think it's time for you to open your heart. Heart Swap. It's a signature move of Manaphy and I think Magirna. Instead of stealing only their attack or defense boost, you steal all their boosts. Now, if there was some way that you could gain an insane amount of boosts in one turn, say, I don't know, plus two special attack, plus two special defense, and plus two speed, it would be a real shame if I got those boosts instead. So Heart Swap is actually way, way better than either of these because it is so much more applicable. It's basically just better than Haze because instead of removing their boosts, you take them. So the Pokemon that do have Heart Swap, use it. And if other Pokemon could use Heart Swap, they probably would. I think this is overall just better than Haze. So generally, you would appreciate stealing their boosts rather than just negating them. And for the haters that say that modern Pokemon has no soul, you're wrong. It has no heart. Gunk Shot. 120 base power physical poison move with 80 accuracy and a pretty funny animation. You like, you like toss garbage at them out of a can. Uh, it's a lot more useful than you would think. I'm not going to say it's good, but this contributed to Greninja getting banned because you would use this to kill fairy types with it. Even though Poison is the worst offensive typing in the game, uh, with this much power and fairies being as good as they are, it probably has a target. Nearish? Definitely don't search Gunk Shot and Pokemon on like Google. You're not gonna get good results. Uh, Gunk Shot also has a 30% poison chance, although when you're using a 120 base power move, I don't think you're really worried about the secondary effect, but it can poison. One man's trash is another man's 120 incoming damage, I guess. Gyro Ball. I always thought they were more of a cylindrical shape myself. <laughs> okay, Gyro Ball. This move is actually kind of crazy. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's really strong. So this is a 120 base power, 100 accuracy steel move. Now it technically has variable power, where it gets stronger the slower you are compared to your enemy. It's 120 base power, okay? All the Pokemon that use this deal massive damage. For it to be max power, your opponent has to be four times faster than you, which sounds like a lot, but it's really not because most Pokemon want to be fast. Anybody who has faced Fortress or Ferrothorn, which is everyone because those Pokemon are everywhere, has learned how it feels to get balled on. <laughs> You would think that because Ferrothorn is invincible, it wouldn't do any damage, but you would be wrong. <laughs> wow, Gyro Ball is so good, I'm sure its counterpart, Electro Ball, will be just as good. Find out in the Gen 5 list. <laughs> Worth noting, you can't stop Chestnut. He's bulletproof, so it does block Gyro Ball. I've got Gyro Balls of Steel. <laughs> Hammer Arm! I keep this in my fridge to suppress bad smells. There's a baking soda brand called Arm & Hammer. It's it's the close combat at home. I mean, 100 base power fighting move, that's pretty good. 90 accuracy, that's okay. Drops your speed? Uh-oh, it's probably better than Aquadale. So usually the Pokemon that use Hammer Arm either don't mind the speed drop, so like you were going second anyway, in which case, who cares about the speed drop? Or it actually turns the speed drop into upside uh, by using it in Trick Room, where the slower you are, the better you are. But overall, you'd probably rather use close combat. It's definitely better than superpower, that's something. When all you have is a hammer arm, everything looks like a nail. I guess 90% of things, because you miss 10% of the time. And unfortunately, no contrary Pokemon actually get hammer arm, so you can't use this in a funky way to get a speed boost. Head Smash! So when we talked about these three recoil moves up here, somebody mentioned Head Smash. I made a case for these three being worth the recoil. A uh, head smash is maybe not. <laughs> so it's 150 base power, massive, 80 accuracy. All right, you might miss. And unlike these moves, which have 30% recoil, head smash has a brutal 50% recoil. If you are head smashing, you are not long for this world, either because you missed and got killed or because you hit and killed yourself. <laughs> Why did Rampardos go extinct? Probably because it kept trying to use head smash. <laughs> Uh, this does combo really well with Rock Head, which Rampardos does not get for some godforsaken reason. But Agron really likes this. Relicanth can use it, but then you're using a Relicanth, so you're sort of lost by default. Tyrantrum can do it. Pseudo Widow can do it. If you have Rock Head, this is really strong, 80% of the time. Top of Niche, it, it's really strong. But if you don't have Rock Head, uh, you are just asking to lose. <laughs> Heal Block. Prevents the opponent from using recovery. You know what also prevents them from using recovery? Killing them with a damage move. What? Why would you ever use this? Oh, Kefagrius gets block and heal block? This guy's got Legos, double blocks. Oh, and oh my God, it uproots the big root. That's true. It completely hard counters big root. Oh my God. As we know, big root dominates the meta. Why would you ever, ever use heal block when you could use taunt? Taunt blocks healing and so much more. Okay, apparently you can still eat your citrus no. berry if you're taunted, but not if you're heal blocked. So the berry industry doesn't want you using heal block, but I'm not in the pocket of big berry. Heal block's terrible. For the sake of completeness, I guess we'll just go through all this stuff. So I guess from generation six onward, heal block got kind of a buff. So you now can no longer use HP draining moves, except Leech Seed. So you can't Drain Punch or Giga Drain if you've been heal blocked. So that's like anti-taunt, that's something, I guess? Uh, and then heal block itself got blocked in the current games, it's gone. And heal block is the least fun move in the game. Your opponent just wanted to have fun with you and his fun, bro. I guess you just hate fun if you use heal block. Healing Wish. Actually pretty useful. Healing Wish has a huge drawback. It kills you. So the next Pokemon that comes in after you depart this mortal realm uh, gets healed to full and has any status cured. You use this when you're like almost dead as a last ditch effort to then give another one of your teammates a second chance. Uh, I'm not gonna say it's a staple move, but there's certainly Pokemon who would use it. Thierish? 
Great Sacrifice is definitely better since Great Sacrifice at least leaves you at 1 HP and it also heals all of your teammates. Power Creep is out of control. Speaking of Healing Wish and Power Creep, Lunar Dance? <laughs> Lunar Dance is the signature move of Lunala, is that what it's called? No. Cresselia. <laughs> it's, it's the exact same as Healing Wish, except it also restores PP, which will almost never matter, but it is strictly better, so sure. Generally, the last thing that Cresselia wants to do is die, so it's probably not going to be using Lunar Dance, but it could. Would other Pokemon use it? I mean, if they had the option to use it instead of Healing Wish, they definitely would, because it's just strictly better. Wait, it's not strictly better, and I'll mention why when we get to it. I guess with Lunar Dance, you can refresh Revival Blessing, because Revival Blessing only has one PP, so you, you can chain... Wasting turns, I guess. Like, you're not actually doing anything. Heal order! This is yet another signature move of Vespiquin. What a lucky queen. It's just recover. Restores half your health. Recover's really good. Although, in general, you would rather use Roost. Uh, I mean, we're going to talk about Roost in a little bit. Spoilers, it's very good. So even if you had access to heal order, you probably wouldn't use it. You'd rather use Roost. But it is a flavor win to have Vespiquen have its, uh, its little drones do everything for it. Execute. Order. Okay, cancel that. It's not in the game. Execute. Order. 404. If you're really looking for upside on heal order, it's better than recover because it's less likely to be imprisoned. You can't <laughs> arrest the queen. <laughs> ice Shard. 40 base power. Priority ice move. We've talked about how good priority moves are, and this is maybe the best one in the game? At least of the 40 base power squad. You might have noticed, there's a couple incredibly dangerous Pokemon <laughs> that are waiting to kill your entire team, and they would if not for one icy boy. 40 base power is not a lot, but when you quadruple that, <laughs> maybe you're holding a choice band, maybe you're a Weavile, maybe you're a Mamoswine. This is like the last bastion against these dragons that are at the gate. Uh, even if you're not sniping dragons with it, uh, it's still a priority move, so can't be that bad. This move lets Avalon go first. Welcome to the Ice Age, buddy. <laughs> Iron Head. <laughs> 80 base power steel move, 100 accuracy, 30% chance to flinch. You faced a Jirachi lately? <laughs> it's pretty good. It's just a very solid move. Is it 70 base power? Sorry. I took a few iron heads earlier, I might not be speaking clearly. It is 80 base power, I, I was never wrong, okay? Even outside of Serene Grace flinch strats, this is actually a move you might run for coverage. Garchomp actually uses this so you could bash fairies. It's definitely better than Headbutt. Great distribution on Iron Head. Most Pokemon have heads, and I guess can use Iron Head. Incredible insight, only available on this channel. Tremble mortals and despair. Judgment has come to this world. I think the actual line was Doom. Judgment is one of the flashiest moves in the game. Calls down like columns of destructive light. Probably not of the normal type because the type changes based on your equipped plate. 100 base power, 100 accuracy, which is going to be great no matter what type you shift it to. Now Arceus Normal doesn't use this because Arceus Normal is busy sweeping your team with extreme speed. But if you're using an Arceus that is actually taking advantage of multi-type, you're probably using Judgment. Uh, Judgment had a really sick effect in Legends Arceus if you had the Legend Plate equipped, where it would automatically shift you to the best type to face your opponent. So Judgment would always be super effective against your opponent, and it would also change you a t to a type that most likely resisted your opponent. We tricked God itself by opening up an Onyx to Judgment, which would then make Arceus into a Grass type, which made it much easier to defeat. Here we go. The battle that was meant to be. Let's go. Deity versus Deity. Normal Stealth Rock. This will be a victory for Onyx. Oh, so this is how Judgment works. Uh-oh. Oh my god, avert your eyes. Oh. Disgusting. <laughs> 
I wish that that version of Judgment was also how it worked in the mainline games. I think that would be fun. I also don't think it would be that overpowered, and if it is overpowered, it's Arceus. Maybe it should be overpowered. Does Arceus use this move? Yeah. Would other Pokemon use this move? Probably not, because then they would be locked to the plates, which wouldn't provide them much more benefit. Last Resort. It's got a very funny Japanese name. Toteoki. The best. <laughs> Is this move the best? Uh, no, not even close, but it's pretty funny. So in order to use Last Resort, you have to first use all of your other moves. The easiest way to do this is to only have one other move. So for example, fake out, you fake him out, boop, and then you're free to spam a 140 base power normal move. And I hope that wins you the game because you don't have two other moves to use. I think it's pretty ironic that it's called last resort because this is definitely not your last resort. This is your plan A. If you're actually gonna be using this, you have to, you have to set it up. So how good is Last Resort? I mean, I don't want to put it in niche. I mean, this gives you m minus two moves because you sacrifice two of your other moves to more easily use Last Resort. Is that worth it? I don't think so, no. But it is called the best, right? This is like a pure meme move. We should mention Extreme Evo Boost, right? So if you use the Z move form of Last resort with Eevee, you'll get nine evil boost. The nine evolution boost doesn't do any damage, but you get plus two to your attack, defense, special attack, special defense, and speed stats. But you're an Eevee. Good luck. Wow, using a move just to still have worse stats than an actual Pokemon. Terrible. You can baton pass it though. I, I guess we can put it above Giga Impact. I just really hate Giga Impact. The best! Well, at least it's not the worst. Lucky Chant. If you're running this move, good luck, you'll need it. <laughs> this is so horrible! So Lucky Chant shields your team from critical hits for five turns. No. <laughs> no. I, if you're doing a Nuzlocke, this is actually pretty useful because getting crit will, will actually like ruin your entire run. So what's the crit chance? It's 8%, right? If you use Lucky Chant and your opponent attacks you all five turns, there is a 40% chance that this move reduced the damage of one of those attacks by 50%. What are the lyrics to this thing? Burn them. Worst songwriting, Lucky Chant. Let me ask you. You feeling lucky, kid? Well, you shouldn't. It's gone. Bad luck only for this franchise. Magma Storm. This is like super fire spin. <laughs> this is the signature move of Heatran. This does massive damage 70% of the time. That's pretty shaky. Oh man, Vig Vigoroth's having a bad day here. Oh, used to have 70 accuracy and 120 base power. But then it gained 5 accuracy and then it lost 20 base power. 100 power is a lot. And the issue with the, the binding moves is that... They don't really do anything, but this one does massive damage and it traps them and it does damage over time. So 75% of the time, it's really good. And if you have the legendary binding band, it does even more. So one nice thing is that if you trap your opponent, they can't switch. So even if they bring in a counter to you and you trap them, you can switch out and know that your opponent is gonna be right there next turn. And then after that, they're free, but that's still a very nice upside. 75% of the time. Does Heatran use this move? Yeah. Would other Pokemon use this move? Yeah, it's pretty good. Magnet Bomb. I thought this was Mirror Shot. So Magnet Bomb is 60 base power? And Magnets, how do they work? Well, they always hit you. It's a Steel type Aerial Ace. There you go. Just use Flash Cannon. Do you not have Flash Cannon? I guess you could use Magnet Bomb. Wait, it's special, right? I've apparently been mystified by magnets because I didn't notice this was a physical move. <laughs> magnet Zone, you all right? I guess you don't know how magnets work. Who in the world is out there magnet bombing? I thought this was special. Uh, I really hate Giga Impact. And to make things even worse, blocked by Bulletproof. Now you have a reason not to use it. Magnet Rise. Uh, every single flying type has Magnet Rise by default. 
so does every Pokemon that has Levitate. This just gives you the flying status at the cost of a move slot and one of your actions. Is that worth it? Ne uh, never. Can I say never? We can put Gravity and Magnet Rise together, okay? They're mortal enemies. Magnet Rise is used on exactly Magnezone to trap Excadrill. I think we beat Gravity. We're rising. Me first. Definitely the signature move of selfish millennials and zoomers everywhere. Me first, so what does this move do? Copies the move your opponent is going to use, and it uses it at 1.5 times base power. Note that this move does not have priority. You have to actually be faster than your opponent, otherwise this does nothing. Why in the world is your plan to use your opponent's moves? <laughs> this is atrocious. Yeah, it's probably worse than acupressure, you're right. If me first actually had priority, this could maybe be a niche. We're putting me first. Dead last. I just wanted to say that. We're gonna put it like here. When am I gonna get my turn? Apparently never. Goodbye. It does have kind of a fun Z move effect where you'll get a plus two speed boost and the copied move also becomes a Z move, similar to how mirror move actually does stuff. Metal burst. This move single-handedly catapults Bastiodon to terror. God, Metal Burst. Metal Burst itself is not bad. Metal Burst is kind of like the coward's counter. So for counter, you deal double damage back if you get hit with a physical move. For Mirror Coat, you deal double damage back if you get hit with a special move. What if you just don't want to think? Use Metal Burst. You'll counter with 1.5 times damage against any attack. So it's the small brain option. Is the reward big enough? Most of the time, no. So on Bastiodon in particular, it's garbage because Bastiodon has really high defense and really low HP, which is the worst possible combination for countering. I think other Pokemon do actually get Metal Burst, like Aggron can do it too. Why are you Metal Bursting instead of smashing them? But I guess, I mean, they definitely won't expect you to Metal Burst. <laughs> All right, well, a lot more Pokemon than I thought are, are Burstin, potentially, but do any of these actually use it? I, I don't know. Important note about Metal Burst. Before you burst, you better listen to this warning. So Counter and Mirror Coat come with negative priority, so you're almost always going to go second when you use them. Metal Burst does not. So if you want to burst on them, you have to go second, otherwise this does nothing. Now, luckily, a lot of these Burstin candidates are very slow to begin with, so you probably are going second, but you gotta make sure you're going second. The synergy with King Gambit losing speed. Sableye gets it. Combo it with Prankster. It's just a prank, bro. Finally. The stall synergy, can you believe it? Good job, Sableye. <laughs> yes, I'm sure with your... Ah, oh, look at that, 50 HP. We can do up to 75 HP of damage on the return if we Metal Burst. <laughs> God. Miracle Eye. After years of meditation atop the highest peak, I've unlocked my Miracle Eye and been granted wisdom. I've been told. This move sucks. It has sort of the odor sleuth and foresight effect of negating your opponent's evasion boosts. Useless. And the main reason that Miracle Eye is known, if you've ever heard of it, it has the unique effect of negating a Dark type's psychic immunity. So if you Miracle Eye a Dark type, you can then hit them with a psychic move. Okay, you could just use a different type move. It's terrible. There, there's no situation where giving them the Miracle Eye is the right choice. Just like focus blast them or something. Attack them with something other than a psychic move. Terrible. <laughs> Maybe someone with better eyesight can find a use for this? Although it looks like we're blind. I hope you've got insurance, otherwise you will pay for your lack of vision. Mirror Shot. I thought this was Magnet Bomb. Where's Magnet? It's definitely better than Magnet Bomb. So apparently Flash Cannon, Mirror Shot, and Magnet Bomb are all different moves. Yeah, somebody just typed, what is Mirror Shot? Good question. <laughs> Mirrors, how do they work? Mirror Shot, or as it's known in Japanese, Mirror Shot. 65 base power, 85 accuracy, 30% chance to lower the target's accuracy by one stage. Sounds like filler to me. And I guess it, it works out in alphabetical order. Mirror Shot is just the shiny version of Mud Bomb. 
we can just put them together, right? Actually, mud bombs are way better. <laughs> That's... I was actually doing some mud bombing runs uh, with Paldean Quagsire because I didn't have anything else to do. Yeah, you generally don't want to be using mud bomb. I think they're the exact same. Uh, they're just different types, and ground's definitely a better attacking type than steel. I sense the plot to destroy the meta. It's a nasty plot. What are you scheming? It can't be anything good. It might it might be vile thoughts with dark pulse. It's a really good boosting move. It gives you plus two special attack. I think we ended up putting Sword Stance in SD. Yeah, I knew somebody would ask this immediately. So, Nasty Paws is the special attack equivalent of Sword Stance. So, why isn't it in the same position as Sword Stance? Because Sword Stance is way better. <laughs> the main reason why Sword Stance is better is because a bunch of priority moves are physical. So, if you Sword Stance and then you have priority moves, there you go, you win. <laughs> if you Nasty Plot, you're probably just gonna get outsped and killed by something. It is not nearly as much of a win. It doesn't put you in as nearly a good of. It doesn't put you in as nearly a good. It doesn't put you in as nearly as good of a position as Swords Dance does. Yeah, Nasty Plot also has much worse distribution. Swords Dance is everywhere. Everybody uses swords. It's just like Fire Emblem. Yeah, what'll very often happen is that you'll you'll plot something nasty and then just get punched Surprise. in the face by Scizor, and then that's the end of your plan. People are acting like I'm saying this is a bad move. Like, look where it is. Look at all the moves I think it's better than. I, I just don't think it's as good as Swords Dance was. What would make this move really good was if it also gave you a Focus Sash or like Endure Effect when used it. We can call it Nasty Plot Armor. That's a pretty funny comment. Nasty Plot <laughs> versus Swords Dance is the story of every Fire Emblem game. Natural Gift. Chances are you don't know what's on the gift list, but you might be surprised at how useful it can be. All right, so right off the bat, we are using Meganium as the model here, so we're a little bit worried. So what Natural Gift does is an attack based on the barrier you're holding. Here's all the options, but as you can see, you get up to 80 base power, 100 accuracy, one-time use moves of pretty much any type you could want. So this ends up being a very strange version of hidden power that relies on you holding a berry. And this attack is physical, so RIP hidden power. This is probably your best access to random <laughs> type coverage on physical Pokemon. I think the fact that you can whip out a random 80 base power move that your opponent is most certainly not expecting is a niche move. We'll put it next to Bug Bite for their berry buddies, okay? Oh yeah, good thing it has 15 PP, so you can spam it with Recycle. And I guess as with Fling, it does have synergy with losing your item if that's something you want to do for, like, Unburden. Like, Natural Gift definitely does lead to some very fun moments when you blow your opponent out with, like, a random berry that they had no idea was even possible. Very fun move. Gifted. Night Slash. It's always confusing whether a move with night in it is ghost or dark. This one is dark, but nightshade is ghost. This has a very scary Japanese name. It's Tsujigiri, which is crossroad killing. It is the practice of out of control samurai chopping up peasants to test their new swords. I can see why they changed it to night slash. It's slash but evil. Well, it's much better than Slash because Dark is way, way better than normal. Dark is actually a really good just attacking type in general. I think I'll probably put this above Bug Buzz. The base power is a little disappointing. It's, I think, 70 base power. That's good enough to be considered a staple coverage move. I, it is also a slashing move, so it does get a sharpness boost, which is very nice. Why would you not use knockoff? The answer is because you don't learn knockoff. Otherwise, yeah, you should definitely use knockoff. I think this is the exact same as Shadow Claw, right? Except they're different types. And Night Slash slashes for a sharpness boost, but Shadow Claw does not. So Night Slash is a little better. Dark and Ghost actually have almost the same coverage. They have the exact same super effective coverage, but the resists are a little different. So these are almost interchangeable. It just depends on whether you got claws or blades, I guess. Shadow Claw does have better distribution. 
Despite being a physical type at the beginning of the game, Ghost has notoriously bad physical coverage options. They had a really good one with Poltergeist, but I guess they called an exorcist because it's not in the game anymore. Womp womp. Ooh, it's an ominous wind with 60 base power. Uh, it's okay filler if you don't have Shadow Ball yet. 60 base power is not a disaster and it does have the very fun upside of 10% of the time giving you an Omni Boost. Uh, it is the spooky clone of Silverwind. It's definitely a better type than Silverwind. If you have Serene Grace, that's a 20% chance to get the Omni Boost. Oh, what about Technician Ominous Wind Special Scissor? I mean, I'm scared. <laughs> Does anybody remember the underrated GameCube classic, The Wind Waker? That had probably my favorite rendition of Ganondorf, because <laughs> Ganondorf in Ocarina of Time was, I guess his personality was bad guy. He's literally playing the organ in a tower. And then the Ganondorf in Wind Waker is literally the same Ganondorf, but he's he has a completely different personality. He's like much more humble. He gives a reason for why he went on all these like, evil conquesting trips, it's because he's from the desert and he coveted the wind that was blowing. And that's actually like the last thing he says uh, after you stab him in the head, spoilers, he says the wind is blowing. And then he dies. Ganondorf, I have news for you. The wind is no longer blowing. He didn't get the Omni Boost. 10% <laughs> chance to conquer Hyrule, 90% chance to get stabbed by a kid. Nasty plot Ganondorf is meta-defining? I don't know, because like Ganondorf... I guess Ganondorf is a special attacker, right? He's like a wizard? Even though in the games he just punches you. Ganondorf's probably over some payback. Payback! It's 50 base power dark move. But if you go second, then it's 100 base power. That's not bad. This is like very top of filler out class. Like this is a coverage move you might consider using if you really have nothing else. One of the weird things about Payback, we mentioned this when we talked about Avalanche, is that Payback is not a vengeance style move. You don't actually have to get hit for Payback to get the bonus, which is really weird. And I know you don't believe me. Believe it. Look, it has nothing to do with actually getting hit. You just have to move second. This was much better when you could also get the bonus from the opponent just switching. But now if they switch out, you just smack them for like 50, which is not very good. I think if Payback still had the double damage upon switch, I'd probably put it in very low staples. But without that, this is very shaky. And all of this is assuming that you're slower in the first place, which really limits where this move can be used. Okay, I'm, I'm being assured that... Assurance is much better than payback, so let's just do this. Poison jab! I think in Japanese this is actually poison stab, which is fitting because you're probably not using this unless you get stab on it. Cross poison is down here. I think poison jab uh, is significantly better. It has 10 more base power and 10% more chance to poison. So I think if you can learn poison jab, you would definitely use that over cross poison. The cross poison crit chance is like worthless. Garchomp might also jab some people or give him the iron head. Garchomp really hates fairies. <laughs> it's not a bad move, but unfortunately it is a very bad attacking type. Otherwise it'd probably be higher. This sees very heavy use in the anime, well, where Brock gets poisoned like daily by Kroagunk, uh, stopping him from hitting on the girls. Power Gem, a 100% accurate rock move? I don't believe it. I think it's previously 70 base power. It's since been buffed to 80. I don't think anyone is excited about power gemming, but you might do it sometimes. I think you would think this would be better. It's like a special rock move of 80 base power with 100 accuracy. That doesn't sound that bad. Rock is a very useful coverage type. I think the issue is that not many have the power to utilize this gem. I guess you could consider it a hidden gem. Not many people have uncovered it. This would be higher up if it was more distributed. I think a lot of Pokemon would love to run Power Gem, but just can't. Notably, Power Gem might be very good in an only a run of Pokemon Violet, explained in the Pokemon Scarlet only a video, which probably doesn't exist by the time I post this premium. But if it does exist, go watch it and 
this comment will make a lot more sense. It's such a dumb name, is the Japanese name cooler? Well, let's see what the Japanese name of it is. Power Gem. It's not cooler. Power Trick. So, when I say Power Trick, the Pokemon that comes to mind is almost certainly Shuckle. So what this move does is it swaps your defense and your attack. Why would you ever want to do this? For Shuckle memes. That's about it. Set up a Trick Room, try Power Trick, probably lose the game, but maybe have some fun while you're doing it. Uh, Shuckle fans losing, as they have been for decades by this point. They're used to it. They've got a lot of defense. They, they can take it. If you're considering power tricking, let me ask you this. Why not just boost your stats instead, okay? <laughs> There's even more power to be had with Power Whip. Surprisingly good distribution. Uh, even if you're not a grass type, as long as you've got a noodly appendage, you can probably whip powerfully. Where's Woodhammer? I think we can put these together. It's 120 base power, has no drawback aside from the 80 accuracy, which it's a pretty big drawback, but lots of Pokemon are whipping. Ferrothorn, if he didn't kill you with Gyro Ball, he's probably gonna kill you with Power Whip. Uh, it's probably worse than Leaf Storm. <laughs> oh, Power Whip's apparently 85 accuracy, pretty powerful. I guess some surprising Power Whip wielders, Licky Licky can do it, Gyarados can do it. Whipped. When will they add the ice type cool whip? I'm waiting. Psycho cut. You like slash? What about dark slash? What about shadow slash? What about mind slash? It's literally the same, but it's a different type. Psychic is probably the worst offensive type out of these three, but it is better than normal. And notably, this is a slicing move. So Gallade loves it. Gallade with sharpness and psychic stab is actually doing Knife infomercial levels of slice slicing. Like that aluminum can, it's gone. The pineapple, gone. Really strong move if Gallade uses it. Otherwise, you would maybe use this for some type of coverage. It's not terrible. 70 base power, high crit. Psycho Shift. It's not synchronized. So Psycho Shift takes statuses from you and gives it to the opponent. They probably don't want your status. Too bad, <laughs> you're gifting it to them anyway. This is actually surprisingly useful. I think this actually does go in niche, specifically on some Magic Guard Pokemon. So Magic Guard Pokemon like to status themselves with orbs, like Flame Orb or Toxic Orb, and then you can use Psycho Shift to give this to your opponent. Why would you do this instead of just using like Will-O-Wisp or Toxic? And the answer is because that way you get to keep a status on yourself, which makes you immune to other more harmful status like Paralysis or Sleep. You can also apparently rest sleep talk and then psycho shift the sleep off. Seems interesting. But it also sounds like something that maybe you could only pull off in your dreams. Punishment. I'm not really sure why you would run this move. So at its floor, it's a 60 base power dark move, which is where we have assurance and payback. But it does have potential upside, but it is so narrow. So what Punishment does is, for every stat boost that your enemy has, Punishment does, I believe, 20 more base damage. So if they've gotten a plus two boost with Sword Stance, this now does 100 damage. I guess if they Shell Smashed, well, they're in for a world of hurt because they lowered their defenses and you're about to hit them really hard. What if your opponent doesn't boost? Well, then you're just using a really bad Dark move. What if your opponent does boost? Well, then they're probably about to kill you with their boosts. Why are you using Punishment? <laughs> The only reason why this isn't like lower in filler outclassed is because the, the floor is a 60 base power dark move. That's not that bad. If you just think of it as that with potential narrow upside, I think it escapes bad. Roar of time. Is this the worst legendary signature move of all time? I think it is. Be lucky that you're a signature move, otherwise you'd be chilling out with Giga Impact, terrible. It's a dragon type Giga Impact. All the downsides of Giga Impact apply to this, except I think it's even worse because instead of Roar of Time, how about this move? Draco Meteor, ever heard of it? It's pretty good. It's 10 more base power for an absolutely catastrophic downside. No thanks. The Lord of Time deserved better. I wouldn't use this move in a million years. I guess Dialga has all the time in the world, so maybe he can figure out a use for this. Apparently it goes through soundproof, hooray. 
So one thing I thought would be fun would be if instead of pressure, which every legendary gets, if Dialga got some ability like hyper time or something, where two turns pass each turn instead of one, so you'd get two turns of leftovers, charge moves would go off instantly, and Roar of Time would have no recharge. I think that would be really fun. Don't tell Xerneas I said any of this, by the way. Rock Climb. This is almost always just bad return. <laughs> Another part of the hellscape of HMs that was Gen 4. Yeah, somebody said a Tauros Rock Climb Sheer Force. That is about the only place where you would actually use this over return. It has a confusion chance, so with Sheer Force factored in, it ends up being a little bit stronger than return, although it has worse accuracy. Niche. So yeah, 90 base power, 85% accuracy, gets a 30% boost from Sheer Force. And if rock climbing is your hobby, it's illegal in Spain. Sorry. Okay, I guess in the anime, Ash's Torterra likes to spam it, because it doesn't have Earthquake. I really don't think we should be taking tips from Ash, okay? Also, why isn't this a rock-type move? It would be so much better if it was a rock-type move. If it was a rock-type move, it would actually be, I think, like, near the top of staples. It would be great. Rock Polish. The Nackley line loves this move? I think something is wrong with the Scarlet and Violet AI, because almost every member of the Nackley line that I've faced just spams Rock Polish. I have no idea what's going on. So Rock Polish doubles your speed. It's like agility. In fact, it's exactly the same as agility, except different Pokemon learn it. Usually really slow rock types that are going to start polishing themselves. This is overall, I would say, worse than agility, because doubling your speed doesn't mean you go first. It means you have doubled speed. And for a lot of these Pokemon, their speed is so bad in the first place that using a turn on Rock Polish doesn't actually get you to move first. So I think this is going to be like a, a top of niche move or a bottom of staples move. There are times you would use this, but oftentimes you just don't get the results you want. Groudon and Necrozma Duskmane really like it. That's true. Yeah, we can, we can, for them, we'll put it at the bottom of staples. Polished. This move is also featured in Fire Emblem Engage. There is a fairly robust polishing minigame. I guess the rings are rocks. It's even voice acted. <laughs> Rock Wrecker. <laughs> I said the damaging moves probably aren't going to go in bad, but I'm tempted. God, Rock Wrecker. <laughs> I guess it's a signature move. Congratulations. But oh my God, Rock Wrecker. It's a rock type hyper beam. It's Rhyperior's signature move. We've said everything there is to say about Rock Wrecker in this game. Just know that if you're going to ask me about the Pokemon Conquest tier list, my answer is someday. And on that day, be prepared to talk about Rock Wrecker Rhyperior in Conquest. I say get ready as if any amount of preparation would be enough to face Conquest Rock Wrecker Rhyperior. Roost. It's like recover. I would say that this move is perched up high. What a good move. <laughs> this move rules the roost. It's so good. On paper, it doesn't seem that much better than recover. It has the same effect. It restores half your health. And it also removes your flying typing for the turn. Is that downside? Most of the time, it's actually upside. If you've got a big brain, it's definitely upside because you can outplay your opponent by roosting when they don't expect it to change your typing and mess up the move that they're going to use. Uh, it has amazing distribution. If you can fly, you can probably use this. I love this move. You can actually use this to do bulky sets with pretty much any flyer. Salamence can use it and suddenly you can't kill him. Zapdos can use it, suddenly you can't kill him. Charizard can use it. I'm still dead if you use a rock move, but otherwise I'm probably okay. Almost any Pokemon that learns Roost, no matter how frail they are, might go like, oh, I don't know. If I can start Roosting, maybe I can start boosting. I think a good litmus test for how good Roost is, is that when Pokemon can learn Roost and other recovery options, like for example, Vespaquin can learn Heal Order and Roost, Togekiss can learn Soft Boiled and Roost, they will always go with Roost, because removing your flying type is usually upside. And don't forget that Roost eliminates your weakness to bows. Does Roost remove the type until switch or just that turn? Just that turn. If it removed it the entire time you were in, it would be much worse, because then 
Well, then the opponent would know that you're no longer a flying type, and usually that's a bad thing, because then they can, like, earthquake you and stuff. Seed Bomb. Remember Energy Ball? I guess it's better than Poison Jab. So Seed Bomb, not much to say about this. 80 base power physical grass move, no additional effects. Blocked by Bulletproof, I guess. There you go. For the Bulletproof Lobby, the, the NRA is in this stream. Every single move, somebody's talking about Bulletproof interaction. I, it's because False Swipe Gaming uploaded the Chestnut video today. I don't think Chestnut's ever gonna get this much attention again. Seed Flare. Best grass move ever? I think so. Look at this, Seed Flare. 120 base power, 85 accuracy, eh? and a 40% chance to harshly lower special defense. But because Shaman has Serene Grace, that's actually 80%. Uh, Shaman Sky got banned for a reason. It's because he was blowing up the entire meta. It's crazy. It, it's kind of like a bad version of Contrary Leaf Storm because the penalties are being applied to the opponent rather than the boost being applied to you. But that's still really scary. You might just die to the first one, and if not, you're definitely dying to the second one. Does Shaman use it? Yes. Would you use it even if you didn't have Serene Grace? Uh, yes. Excellent move, probably the best grass move of all time. Shadow Force, and I think by now, you're starting to see why I made a signature move tier. There's so many of these. So Shadow Force is a better version of Phantom Force. Uh, this is a 120 base power, two turn physical ghost move. So you disappear on the first move, just like fly or dive. And then on the second move, you strike. I think this is Giratina's signature move. It's okay, it's definitely the best two-turn damaging move, but one thing that's really problematic about this is that it is a ghost move, and it takes two turns. Remember that ghost moves have an immunity, right? If your opponent has a normal Pokemon, you can't even use this. The best part about Shadow Force is the animation in Legends Arceus. It's probably one of the best animations in Legends Arceus. It's really fast, looks really cool. So does Giratina actually use this move? I don't know, I, I don't think so. Would other ghost types use this move if they could? Probably not, two turn moves in general are really bad, but I would definitely use this over Phantom Force. I think this is just a straight upgrade over Phantom Force. So while you're in the Shadow Realm, you're not completely invincible, a couple things can hit you. Uh, if they locked on or used Mind Reader, they can still hit you. Don't have to worry about that because nobody uses those moves. But you do have to worry about No Guard. No Guard can still hit you. And also, Poison types using Toxic can still hit you as well. Another upside to Shadow Force is that your opponent can't cheese it with Protect like they can against Fly and Dive because Shadow Force will actually go through Protect. So don't try and block it that way. Just use a normal type. So one cool thing about Shadow Force is that it's kind of like a, a mini feint <laughs> where it'll actually not only go through Protect, it'll actually cancel Protect for the rest of the turn. So if you're in some double scenario where you're Shadow Forcing, uh, the opponent getting hit by Shadow Force has their Protect negated for the turn. Pretty cool. Shadow Sneak. Uh, it's a priority move. I think we talked about a couple other priority moves. This one's a Ghost type one. There you go. Sneaky. 40 base power. Usually goes first. Nice. Shadow Sneak has never had the sort of wide use that Bullet Punch and Ice Shard have both have, but it's not a bad option. Apparently it's Dusk Noir's best stab. That's kind of sad. R.I.P. Poltergeist. It's a ghost move. Truly R.I.P. Spatial Rend. It's really boring, but it's really good. So Spatial Rend is a... 100 base power special dragon move uh, with high crit. Of course it's 95% accurate. Master of Space can't even hit his attacks, what a joke. But yeah, Palkia's signature move, overall better than Dragon Pulse because you get more power, you get the high crit, and you only lose 5% accuracy. If you combo it with gravity, it has 100 hits. Also has a very cool animation in uh, Legends Arceus. Does Palkia use Spatial Rend? Yes. Would other special attacking dragon types use Spatial Rend? Yeah, if they could. Stone Edge. I think it's fair to say that this is the most hated move in the history of Pokemon. <laughs> ah! Nobody calls this move Stone Edge, right? If you know what this move is actually called, go ahead and type it now. Stone Edge? 
more like stone miss. God! I'll tell you the stats of Stone Age, as if you don't already know. 100 base power. High crit. 80% accuracy. <laughs> ah! I think the reason why the Nintendo DS sold so well is because every time you missed Stone Age, you just chucked your DS against the wall and you had to buy a new one. <laughs> I think the reason why Stone Age is so hated is because it is the best rock move. There's a lot of Pokemon where their best stab option is Stone Edge. And it also has really high distribution. There are tons of Pokemon that are forced to run Stone Edge because they have no other choice. Do you want a strong rock move? You've gotta gamble on Stone Edge. You gotta live on the edge even if you don't want to. It's a really good move. You're gonna see it everywhere. And 80% of the time it works. 20% of the time it doesn't. It's It does form a very important combo with Earthquake. They call it Quake Edge coverage for a reason. Because if they're flying, meaning they're not getting quaked, they're almost always vulnerable to then getting edged. Yeah, somebody said it. It's the worst best move in the game. Uh, it is significantly stronger than Rock Slide in singles. So... You can't just substitute them out. You do have to use Stone Edge. And something I do want to stress here is that just because you missed Stone Edge and lost the game doesn't mean that using Stone Edge was a mistake, okay? No results-oriented thinking here. It's like, if your chance to win by choosing Stone Edge was 80%, but then you miss and lose, that might still have been the right choice because maybe your backup plan had like a 40% chance of success. So trust in Stone Edge, I mean, your trust is going to get betrayed a fifth of the time. But overall, it is the right choice, unfortunately. Keep in mind that confirmation bias is a thing, right? Like 80% accuracy is at the point where you feel like it should usually hit. And when it doesn't, that 20% of the time, it feels like something is wrong. It feels like you made a mistake. It was the right choice. You just got unlucky. It really feels like the Stone Edge is a Fire Emblem Six sword, right? This thing never hits. <laughs> and it has high crit. I'm pretty sure that every single player in the game would trade the high crit for 10% more hit. Everybody would make that trade. I don't know anybody who wouldn't. Oh, look, what's that over there? Ha <laughs> ha! Sucker Punch. So Sucker Punch is a, a weird translation. Uh, in Japanese, it's Fui Uchi, which appears in a couple other games. In Breath of the Wild, they called it Sneak Strike. Uh, if you pay 30 US dollars for the Krobin emblem, he also has a move called Fui Uchi, and they translated it as Sneak Attack. Uh, but in Pokemon, they called it Sucker Punch. I don't think Sucker Punch itself is necessarily a bad translation, but just because of the type of game that Pokemon is, it causes confusion because you have a lot of Pokemon that don't have limbs to punch with. And perhaps more confusingly, punches are a category of move that are all boosted by Iron Fist. So the fact that this is literally called punch, but does not get Iron Fist is really confusing. Yeah, I would have called it ambush. You could just call it sneak attack. Up here, maybe? Sucker Punch is super good. So most priority moves, like the ones you see here, these are 40 base power. There are some exceptions. Extreme speed is 80 base power, but it's a normal move. Sucker Punch is 80 base power of dark coverage. That's crazy, but it is conditional. And that condition is you have to be good at the game. <laughs> so if your opponent attacks you, then you can Sucker Punch them. If they don't attack you, if they like boost themselves, if they heal, if they do anything other than using a damaging move, Sucker Punch does nothing and you just wasted your turn. I think this is a really, really fun move. It is one of my favorite moves in the game. It has been nerfed. It is 70 base power, unfortunately, lost 10. It makes for actually really exciting turn-based gameplay. Is the opponent gonna attack me? Maybe I should Sucker Punch them. Ah, uh, but what if they substitute? If they substitute, then I like lose the game. But if they do attack me, I can knock them out now. Ah! So much planning. And I think the fact that this has very limited PP is actually very important. It only has five base PP. It can go up to eight if you boost it. But that means that you can't just spam Sucker Punch against your opponent waiting for them to attack you. 
You have to actually be strategic with this. Really, really useful and powerful move. I would give it, uh, I would almost put it in meta defining. I know some people are saying to do it, but it is exceptionally powerful on tons of slow Pokemon. There's also another fail condition of Sucker Punch, which is that Sucker Punch is only plus one priority. So if your opponent also uses a priority move and they're faster than you, meaning they go first, then Sucker Punch will fail. And there are conditions where you're not actually predicting. For example, if you know your opponent is choice locked and they have to attack you, uh, then you can Sucker Punch them without having to do any guesswork. What a sucker. Switcheroo. Of all of the moves that have type-shifted clones, this one really confuses me. This is literally Trick. It's the exact same as Trick, but it's called Switcheroo. I and mean, Trick's really good. Usually the reason for having just type-shifted or variants of moves is for flavor, right? Heal order is recover, but it has bees! I don't really know what the flavor difference is between Switcheroo and Trick. Plays around in prison, I guess. I guess the flavor difference is trick is like a magic trick uh, where you're sort of just doing like sleight of hand, but switcheroo, you're actually like doing a sinister trick and like stealing it from them. And just to drive home how similar these moves are, check out the trivia section for switcheroo. In generation 9, switcheroo has the same animation as trick. Good thing they removed half the Pokedex for better animations, right? They sure tricked us. Tailwind. A wind blew from behind your team. How far can we fly? Man, flying moves doing really well this list. Wind Waker Ganondorf is shrieking right now. He definitely covets this wind. So in singles, Tailwind is not that good uh, because it doesn't last very long and you have to spend a turn for it. In doubles, speed control is incredibly important and this makes you faster. If you have a Tailwind, you're probably going first for the next three turns with like six actions. And because it is a flying move, it has some interesting synergies. Gale Wings, it's normally used for <laughs> dive bombing your whole team with Brave Bird. But Tailwind is a flying move, so if you have Gale Wings, Tailwind gets priority. Tailwind is also not an attacking move, which means that if you're a prankster like Murkrow, <laughs> you get priority Tailwind. That's incredibly powerful. This move is crucial to Jeb Bush's campaign. I think this is the main activator for Bramblegast's ability Wind Rider. I don't know if any other moves actually activate it. I just don't really know what that ability does or why you would use Bramblegast, but the synergy is there. <laughs> Please clap. Okay, apparently Wind Rider, if you're hit by a wind move or when Tailwind is in effect, its attack is increased by one stage and the move will have no effect on that Pokemon. Oh, man, people were underestimating Jeb Bush. That's actually a pretty nice ability. I'd clap. Yeah, please clap. VGC is the one way you can win money in Pokemon so you can pretend like you're doing something productive instead of playing a game made for 10 year olds if you use Tailwind. Hey, you can make money by making Pokemon YouTube videos, okay? <laughs> I don't have to win anything. In fact, most people would argue that I do nothing but lose. <laughs> Toxic spikes. Worst entry hazard ever? Man, poison types having a bad time. Uh, it's definitely not meta defining, but I mean, we could have like a poison party down here, right? It's pretty unfortunate. So what Toxic Spikes does is it can be applied in two layers. The first layer of Toxic Spikes applies normal poison to any grounded enemy that switches in. If you get two layers up, you then get toxic effect on any Pokemon that switches in. The issue with this, one is applying normal poison is usually bad for you. Uh, because that means you cannot then apply a more impactful status like paralysis or sleep or burn. Anything except normal poison, basically. If your opponent has guts, well now they are about to smack you really hard. If you do get two layers up, that is much better. But you can't guarantee that. If you only get one layer up, you're probably better off never having used it at all. That is not even getting into one of the major downsides of Toxic Spikes, which no other hazard has, which is that there is a free way for your opponent to clear it. If they bring in a Poison no. type, well, that's it. They absorb the Toxic Spikes for free. And your opponent removing your two turns of work for zero turns is horrendous. 
Toxic spikes can be very powerful in certain situations, but oftentimes I think you're just gonna be really disappointed by it. Glamora can set spikes for free if it gets hit with, I think, a physical move, and in that case, yeah, it's all right. But I mean, most moves are good if they're free. Even Growl is good if you're free in the form of Intimidate. It's also hard countered by flying poison types in gravity. Like, if Toxic Spikes was the only way to poison steel types, it would be a lot better. Corrosive Toxic Spikes when? Trick Room. It's a nice speed stat you got there. It'd be a shame if it was worse than useless. Get tricked. <laughs> I love Trick Room. Trick Room is so fun. So Trick Room, again, in singles is kind of suspicious because you have to spend a turn to set Trick Room and then you probably want to switch to another Pokemon that can actually use the Trick Room and then you've got like three turns left. Not really worth it. In doubles, get tricked. <laughs> this is crazy. It is another form of speed control. Did your opponent set up Tailwind? Well, they worse than wasted their turn because now their speed advantage is a disadvantage. A really nice thing about Trick Room is that speed takes up stat points, right? If you have points in speed, you don't have them in other places. So all of these slow Pokemon often are much bulkier, much stronger, but as a consequence, they have to get hit. Well, not if they're in a Trick Room. Now they're going first and you're in a huge amount of trouble. I think Trick Room indirectly buffs a lot of other interactions. Uh, the ability Oblivious blocks Taunt, and that is really important because one of the things you want to stop by taunting is you want to stop one of the Slowbro Pokemon from setting up Trick Room. But you can't because they're oblivious. I've got this mental herb, okay? You can't taunt me. Welcome to the Trick Room. And don't forget the most powerful combo in all of Pokemon. When you set up the Trick Room, they bring you the room service, making you even slower. People unironically run in prison on non-Trick Room teams to stop the enemy team from setting up Trick Room. Like, I sometimes wonder why there isn't a Pokemon that sets Trick Room as their ability. And then a couple seconds later, I always realize, oh, because that would be insanely busted and banned immediately. Do note that there is a limit to the tricks. It does not affect priority brackets. Even with the dimensions twisted, priority moves like Bullet Punch, Ice Shard will still go first. The Trick Room only affects things within a priority bracket. I think Trick Room is also the slowest move in the entire game. It is minus seven priority. I think that is the lowest. Even the counter moves, uh, Counter and Mirror Coat are minus six. The super negative priority of Trick Room is very important because there is no way to fast Trick Room. You can't do Prankster Trick Room. Nothing like that'll work. If your opponent has taunt, they are going to try and taunt you to stop your room. And the only way you can prevent that is to either be oblivious or have a mental herb because you're definitely going second. And there's no trick room counterplay. You can negate weather by setting up your own weather unless you're against one of the weather lords. In which case, I don't know if your concern is really changing the weather. You're probably just going to lose anyway. But for trick room, once it goes up, it's tricky. Good luck. There's a video thumbnail I saw about Reggie Lecky being so fast it overflows and overwrites Trick Room. I think that's true. I didn't see the video, but I believe you when you say that it works. Yeah, I, you know what? I think that the dimensions are twisting. Trick Room is probably going at the top here. If you want to see firsthand how good Trick Room is, just try some double battles. You'll learn very quickly what it means to get tricked. We will put, okay, the dimensions are twisting again. Close combat is really good in every single facet of the game, but Trick Room is only really, really good in one part of the game, which is doubles. So it's only the second best move, oh no. Greetings, trainers. It is I, beloved normal type powerhouse gumshoes. I would like to talk to you today about an exciting opportunity made available to you in generation four. My personal favorite move, and the best in the entire game, Trump Card. Trump Card offers you a whopping 200 base power at a pinpoint 100% accuracy. Compare that to return, and you can see that you get nearly double bang for your buck with absolutely no drawback. Being under pressure benefits Trump Card, evidence that I, as a leader, also excel under pressure. When you're in a pinch, you need an ace up your sleeve. 
Make that ace a trump card and become a Pokemon master today. Excuse me, I have some serious reservations about this move that I would like to express. Now let me be clear. Trump card is not a good move. In fact, one could say that it's hot garbage. Trump card was advertised as a strictly better return. But I'm sorry to inform you that claim was fake news. Trump card starts with 5 PP and increases in power based on its remaining PP. The initial trump card is a pitiful 40 base power, and it only outdamages return on the final use. That's four turns where you are dishing out laughable amounts of normal type damage, not ideal. The Pokemon that learn this move are all varying degrees of either bad, uninterested in using trump card, or both. Not to mention that this is the only move in the game that becomes actively worse if you apply PP up medicine to the move. Now let me be clear, this is not financial advice, but do not under any circumstances invest in trump card. Thanks, Snowbama. Execute order 416. No, not the bees. All over my eyes. Now this is not financial advice, but invest in trump card today. Thank you, Arceus bless you, and subscribe to Imported Cheese. U-turn. 70 base power bug move. Bug is a terrible attacking type. And what it does is after you use it, you switch out. Is that good? Yeah, it's pretty good. So this is the very first of what have been called momentum moves. The other ones are Volt Switch, which is an electric type variant, and Special, and Flip Turn, which is water, but also like 65 base power. U-Turn is crazy. The fact that it's bug doesn't really matter because you're not really using this to do damage. It does do damage. Uh, if you're Scissor and you're U-turning on someone, you're probably doing big damage to them, but for the most part, the damage is irrelevant. <laughs> the fact that U-turn switches you out often puts your opponent in a very terrible situation where they can either stay in, get you turned on, <laughs> die depending on how frail they are, they can switch to something that can take the U-turn better, but then you U-turn and you get to choose a counter to go into, or maybe the Pokemon using U-turn is super slow, so they tank the incoming hit, then they U-turn and their teammate gets in without getting hit. It is so flexible, so powerful, there is no way that I can go over all of the scenarios where U-Turn at the right time wins you the game. Amazing move. U-Turn is also the only momentum move that has no immunities. You can't water absorb it, you can't be a ground type. U-Turn always, always goes off, which makes it, in my opinion, the best momentum move, even though it's the worst typing. Something you might have been wondering, if you didn't watch my uh, top 10 moves that make more sense in Japanese video, is why is this a bug type move? And that's because the Japanese name Tombogairi refers to the ways that dragonflies can really quickly shift directions. So that's why it's a bug type move. Best bug type move ever. I think it's better than close combat, right? Can't squash these bugs. Here's the thing, usually being weak to bug doesn't matter because bug sucks as an attacking type, but everything is U-turning, so if you're weak to bug, you actually have to watch out because you're gonna get turned on. Another huge upside of U-turn that we didn't mention because there's just so many upsides is that you can U-turn out of traps. So say that you've been trapped by Magnezone, but you happen to have U-turn, you can get out of there. Arena trap, out of there. Shadow tag, you turn out of there. I'm I'm you turning this battle around, okay? We're heading towards victory. Ugh. This is now a driving stream. <laughs> it's vacuum wave. You like priority moves? I do. Vacuum wave is a priority move. I think it's the only special priority move. I might be wrong on that, but I, I don't think so. Where's the other priority moves? Vacuum wave. Forty base power special fighting priority move. Water shuriken is also a special priority move. Vacuum Wave has a really confusing description. The user whirls its fist to send a wave of pure vacuum at the foe. This move always goes first. The hell is a wave of pure vacuum? What does that mean? <laughs> Apparently it means 40 base power priority special move. Fighting. Does any Pokemon actually use this? Uh, Blaziken can, Lucario can, uh, Nasty Plot, Krogunk can. You can throw a vacuum at them? Well then it would probably be a physical move, right? Man, look at look at all these guys vacuuming. This is better distribution than I thought. How can a vacuum deal damage? Well, I guess it's a special vacuum. Hey, it's been seven hours since we started. You you asleep? 
Wake up, Mareeple. Wake up, Slap. I mean, at worst, it's a 70 base power fighting move, and it doubles in power to 140 if the opponent is asleep, but then it wakes them up. I mean, at base, it's a 70 base power fighting move. It's not that bad. Used to be 60. It is now 70. Either way, I don't know why you would ever use this. So it is downside that Wake Up Slab removes the sleep condition from your opponent. But if you're hitting them with a 140 base power fighting move, you're not waking them up. You're putting them to sleep for good, right? Komala Harris hates this move. I think it does actually get the bonus off of Comatose, but they don't actually wake up. They just die because they're a normal type. Does anyone actually use this? I don't think so, because you're never running this, hoping that the opponent is asleep, and you're most certainly not putting them to sleep and then slapping them. Because putting them to sleep and then slapping them is the exact same as just slapping them twice. The final member of the Triple X Trio? Ironically, despite this being called X Scissor, Scissor will never use this move. 80 base power, 100 accuracy bug move with high crit, right? Nope. Why not? <laughs> Why not? Cross poison gets high crit. Why doesn't this? Cross chop gets high crit. Why doesn't this? What? Hey, sharpness boost though. Notably, in Legends Arceus, it did have crit. So they gave it crit and then they took it away. <laughs> Why? I guess it does make sense for them to add something and then cut it out. Scissors. This is a pretty sad move, but it's not bad. Like, where is... Where did we put Bug Buzz? I think it's definitely way worse than Bug Buzz. It goes with these sad coverage moves down here. It's probably worse than Poison Jab, considering how many fairies there are now. And the reason why Scizor would never use this is either because they're U-turning, or uh, Scissor gets Technician on Bug Bite, so Bug Bite becomes better. But if you don't have Technician Bug Bite and you want to use a physical bug move, you might use X Scissor. The reason it's called X Scissor is because Control X is the shortcut for cutting. Alright. I, I guess Swarm Scissor might use X Scissor? How can you be a Swarm if you're the only one who's using Swarm Scissor? Zen Headbutt. It's Headbutt, but smart. Kind of. There, there are some differences. So Zen Headbutt has only 90 accuracy, as opposed to Headbutt, which actually does have 100. And the Flint's Chance is only 20, whereas I believe Headbutt has 30. Look at this distribution. Lots of Pokemon are button heads. Smartly, I guess. All of these Pokemon have achieved Zen status. Wow. It keeps going. Hello? <laughs> Who doesn't learn Zen Headbutt? <laughs> All these Pokemon excel at using their head. Wow. Alright, how many people would have guessed that Zen Headbutt was a variation of the move? Hyper Fang. <laughs> okay, it's a psychic version of Hyper Fang. <laughs> If you achieve Enlightenment, probably about the same as Psycho Cut. There's lots of Pokemon that use this for Psychic Coverage. It's probably overall better than Psycho Cut. Psycho Cut is only better if you have Sharpness, so if you're Gallade, that's about it. Otherwise, you'd probably rather have the extra 10 power of Zen Headbutt and the Flitz Chance, even with the 10% Miss Chance. 10% Miss is not that bad. This is, yeah, you're right. This is honestly so much more available. We just learned that everyone achieved enlightenment, so we'll put it above the slashing moves. All right, so ugh, seven hours <laughs> uh, to rank every move introduced in Generation 4. Well, this is our tier list. Get a good look at it. I, I can scroll down a little bit as you can see it all. I hope you enjoyed. I'm feeling really tired, so I... Hang on, somebody's at the door. I'll be right back. Uh, just give me a second. Uh, just a moment. <laughs> Hello. 
I guess it must have been the wind. I need a snack to calm my nerves. It's just my mind playing tricks on me. It must have been the wind. Hey, Venusaur, what's up? <laughs> You got the pokerist? That's, uh, that's rough, buddy. No, no don't worry, I, I can cover for you. Uh, I'll, I'll switch it. <laughs> My name is Charizard. You've probably heard of me. I was one of the original three starters from Kanto. If you're hearing this message, then it's already too late. I've lost half my health, and who knows how long the other half will last. Hopefully long enough to finish this warning. It didn't used to be this way. For three generations, I was free. Why did so many people choose me? I'll be honest, it wasn't because I was good. But I can at least say, I wasn't bad. Then, everything changed. No one saw it coming. How could they? All of a sudden, the new meta snuck up on us all, and we've been living in its shadow ever since. TM-76. Stealth Rock. The best move in the history of Pokemon. For one move slot and one action from one of your six Pokemon, you can cripple the entire enemy team. Stealth Rock wasn't the first entry hazard. Spikes had existed for years, but spikes litter the ground. Flyers like me can avoid them entirely, but the very same wings that used to grant such freedom now cause such pain. To this day, Stealth Rock is the only entry hazard that interacts with the type chart. If you're weak to rock, then say goodbye to a quarter of your health every time you switch in. And if you want to make the team with a stealth rock weakness, you better be damn good. And if you're quadruple weak to rock, <sighs> only a fool would pick me nowadays. But you know what makes these sneaky stones so sinister? It doesn't matter. If you lose half your health, or a quarter, or 12%, or 6%, or 3%, the rocks, the rocks come for us all. Focus Sash. Sturdy? <laughs> Worthless. You can't escape. You can't run. You just have to sit there and let them dig into you. Let them tear your viability to shreds! There used to be a role called Suicide Leads. The lead Pokemon had one mission. Set up Stealth Rocks. Prevent the opponent from doing the same. Then get out of the way. Usually by exploding. This wasn't a gimmick or a radical strategy. This is what everyone did. Stealth Rock was so powerful that people were willing eager to play 5v6. Stealth Rock is worth more than a Pokemon. Take a look at any competitive analysis. Every single calculation has to factor in Stealth Rock. 
over a decade of play, has always had an asterisk next to every action to account for stealth rock chip damage. Just think. If so many minds had never spent all those hours accounting for stealth rock, how much further could society have advanced? That's a world I really wish we got to see. For years, I've wondered, who did this to me? Who made me a fugitive within my own franchise? And now, I know. Who else could it have been? It was Onyx! He's jealous! He's holding me back! He's salty I beat him at pewter! He knows he could never take me down with 45 base attack, so he resorts to traps like the coward he is! Someday, I will have my revengeance. Someday. <laughs> After they bring back Megas.